but they played last week's game. Just kind of seemed a little lackadaisical. Just uh, didn't seem as sharp as, as what they usually see. And, you know, we'll hear from Coach Maxfield here in a minute, but uh, he said uh, earlier this week that uh, – Ready fans are somewhat spoiled because uh, usually fans, when you get a 17-point win, everybody, yeah, we won. Uh, but since they didn't win by more than that, everybody's thinking, dang, coach, is everything okay? Or is the team okay? And he said just a win's a win. It's, it's always good to win when you're in this conference. Henderson State getting another 300-yard passing game from Kevin Rogers, 22nd time that it happened in his great career. We're seeing the emergence now of Joseph Snap, the junior from Van Buren, caught 10 balls for 119 yards. Back-to-back -back games, RJ, where Snap has been the most often targeted ready receiver. He's caught for over 240 yards the last couple of weeks. And now taking on a uh, Northwestern State club that has a lot of trouble holding opponents from the drop by Southern Arkansas by a final of 62 to 21. Northwestern averages 42 points allowed per game, and they've also allowed nearly 461 yards of total offense to their opponents. You know, when you look at this Northwestern State or Northwestern team, they. Uh they're a team that they rank ninth in offense in the GAC. They they rank uh, near the bottom on third down conversion. Uh, they rank near the bottom on fourth down conversion. They're only averaging about 19 points a game. This is a team that last year in Alva, Oklahoma, Henderson State beat 42 to nothing, and Henderson State didn't play all that great. If you remember, there were about 25 mile an hour wins, and it was Kevin couldn't throw the fo the football. That's when we actually saw the running game do quite well last year was because Kevin couldn't throw the football and um, now that was a year ago and this is this year and uh, we see this Northwestern Oklahoma team they, they beat UAM earlier in the year they played uh, Arkansas Tech close uh, for a half they played Southern Arkansas somewhat close for a half and then uh, you know th this is just a team that they're, they're starting to try to really figure out Division two football and, and it may take a while I mean, I mean if you think about it this is a Northwestern Oklahoma team that you know three or four years ago they were an eight win team when they were in NAIA school so it's just that transition that you have to get into, but uh, uh, I would expect to see a much different Henderson State team today back at home, Hall of Honor Day, and you don't have 25-mile-an-hour wins either. Remember the last time we saw the Reddies here at home, they blew out Southeastern on national television, 60-17. to 17. It was a fantastic performance, especially in the second half when the Reddies ran off 35 of the last 38 points, including the last 28. And you couldn't ask for a nicer day for football here in Arkadelphia. It's a day where there's two games right here on Highway 7. Washita across the street right now taking care of business against uh, southwestern Oklahoma State. And here at Carpenter Haygood across the highway, we're about 25 minutes away from kick. It's 72 degrees. Winds are calm. No chance for rain. And we've got plenty coming up on the Domino's pregame show. We invite you to sit back, relax, and while listening to Ready Football, why not enjoy a fresh hot Domino's Pizza. You can call 870-246-3131 or order online at dominoes.com. We'll be joined by Hunter Lively in a couple of segments. We'll also see what's up around the Great American Conference. But next on the Domino's pregame show, RJ sits down to talk with the head ready who came off his 100th game as the ready head coach last week. Scott Maxfield joins RJ after the break on the Ready Radio Network. Is your bank changing names again? Do you see account charges and lots of fees in your future? Well, if that's the case, then it's time to pick the bank that you really want, the bank that you deserve. That's Southern Bank Corp. At Southern, we believe in providing products that are superior to the competition on the front end. Our loan rates are the best in the business and we'll treat you just like family. That's why we know you'll be a happy customer here for years to come. So don't sit back and let someone else pick the bank that's right for you. Pick the bank that has the name that you really want on your debit card. Pick Southern Bank Corp. Come see us today. Southern Bank Corp. With locations in Hot Springs, Bismarck, Malvern, and where it all began, our Philadelphia. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Do you have an idea that you would like to see on a t-shirt? Printmania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Printmania offers a variety of t-shirts from you to choose from. We also have personalized service which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Printmania also does embroidery and engraving. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street or call 246-3803. Printmania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Wendy's presents Red in Best Food Forward. Hey, Red, can you help me make my online dating profile more mature? Well, that's a Wendy's smoked Gouda chicken sandwich, right? Try a foodie with a refined palate. Nice. And what did you do yesterday? I visited my mom. Ooh, family-oriented. And brought her my laundry. 
Roy, you're 34. And a half. Wendy's deliciously grown up new smoked Gouda chicken layers smoky Gouda cheese, caramelized onion sauce, and Dijon aioli on a soft brioche bun. Now that's better. At participating Wendy's for a limited time. Find your freedom with your new home with Jason Eddington of United Country Hometown Realtors. Nobody has more information available for your search to find that perfect home. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com. Take a virtual tour through all of the gorgeous properties. Check out the exclusive aerial views of the properties. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com and pick out your perfect home. Then call Jason Eddington at 870-210-1445. Let Jason work with you to guide you through the maze of finding that home with the most modern and unique ways possible. Call Jason Eddington at 870-210-1445. Life is good in Arkansas. Delphia. Hey, ready fans, this is Glenn and Bobo. Welcome to Henderson State Radio Network. Welcome back to the Domino's pregame shows. It's now time for the Coach's Corner with head coach Scott Maxfield. And coach, it's been a brutal travel schedule to start the year as you've, your first three or four games have been on the road. That's got to wear on the guys. And my question to you is, that are of such you know, just got to watch how they practice, try to get their kids, uh, you know, some extra rest here and there whenever we can. But, you know, five of our first seven games are on the road, so it's, it's not going to get any easier. Uh, after this game, we, we go to Oklahoma, and then we got to go to Arkansas Tech. I guess it's good to get the travel out of the way early in the year, but it, it has been a Taking somewhat of a toll on our football team. You know, we just got to find a way to fight through it and be ready to play uh, against Northwest. Let's talk about last week. You beat East Central 44-27, but it seemed like everybody was a bit sluggish, and I guess it goes back to, you know, being on the bus for so long. What did you uh, think you told me, like, 40 hours on the bus the first three weeks? Yeah, I mean, you know, you combine all our bus time, you know, traveling to the site we play at and back. You know, we've been on the bus over 40 hours, but, you know, we can't use that as an excuse. We, we've got to get ready to go, and, and we played uh, decent at times, and we played good enough to win. I think uh, the coaching staff, the team, has a little bit higher expectations for our performance, but, you know, you go on the road and you win by 17 points. You can't be all unhappy about that. You know, I think we're a little spoiled somewhat uh, with success we've had. We, we expect a little bit more, maybe, out of our performances, so I guess that's a good thing in a way, but uh, anytime you can go on the road and get a win against a good football team by 17 points, I think uh, you need to need to see the bright spots as well. Your team has done a really good job this year of not getting penalties. I believe you rank first in the Great American Conference of the least penalized teams. You know, it seems like these guys from, I guess, four years ago to now are starting to buy into being disciplined on the field. Well, that's a big part of it. You know, uh, playing smart, playing disciplined, uh, playing within the system. That's something that we talk about on a daily basis with our players. And, uh, you know, if we do the little things right, the fundamental things right, then you're not going to get a lot of penalties. And uh, that's something that uh, will benefit our team. It, it helps with field position. It uh, helps with the momentum of the football game. Uh, not to be devastated by big penalties. So uh, hopefully we can continue that trend. Last year you had the duo of Robert Jordan and Darius Davis. This year you've got Joseph Snap and Davis. Snap's done a really good job of stepping into that role and being the number two to Davis this year. Well, he's played extremely well. I mean, I've, I've always thought he was a good player. When Robert went down last year, he came in and uh, he had a lot of catches for us in those last three or four games. He scored four or five touchdowns. So he's a quality football player. He's uh, very deceptive. He can get deep, and uh, he runs good routes, and he plays extremely hard. So uh, we're, we're really excited about where he's at right now as a football player. You know, fans a lot of emphasis on kickers. I guess they're not really the most talked about guys, but you've got a good one in Houston Ray. We saw him kick a 43-yarder earlier this year. What is he like on the practice field, and what's his range really, you know, whenever he's just out there kicking? Well, he, you know, I, I think 40 to 45 yards is, you know, probably his range, but uh, he's been very consistent this year and uh, been a, uh, a big, big uplift to our special teams. He's, he's kicked the ball really well. He's made some key field goals for us, so... Hopefully he can continue that trend. He's hot right now, and hopefully he can continue to uh, kick well. You know, every week we talk about playmakers for this team, and one person in particular is Kevin Rogers. He's now taken down almost every Henderson passing record and is now going after state records. He only needs 1,200 all-purpose yards to be the greatest quarterback in the state of Arkansas. He really is a special guy for someone that really wasn't recruited out of high school. Well, he's had a great career here, and uh, we've been able to surround him with some really good players to help him be successful. But, uh, you know, he's a special player, and 
has done great things. Hopefully he will continue on for the rest of the year. Last week we talked a lot about how good the linebackers on this defense were, but something was brought to my attention this week was the fact that your defensive line has recorded 30 tackles for loss, 14 sacks, and have forced nine turnovers. You've got to really be pleased with the production of those guys. Well, we are. We've, uh, we've worked extremely hard uh, in practice, uh, you know, to uh, be fundamentally sound. Coach Jeff McInerney has come in as our defensive line coach and done a great job uh, just technically with our kids, getting them uh, coached up on uh, just the finer points, the fundamentals, and I think it's really paid off for us uh, this season. Okay, let's talk about this week's game. You have Northwestern Oklahoma come to town. This is a team you guys beat 42 to nothing at their place last year, but this is a team that beat UAM this year. They played with Arkansas Tech. What do you expect from them this weekend? Well, they uh, they're, they're, they can be a dangerous team. Uh, they, they do some very good things on offense to cause some problems. Uh, defensively, they got the leading uh leading defensive end in the conference with the most sacks. So uh, we're going to have to come out and play and, and, and play hard. We can't take anything for granted. We've got to come out and, and uh, play with some emotion and a little bit more excitement than we did uh, last week. How's practice been this week? I know it's cooling off a little bit. How's it been? Well, uh, Tuesday we had a really good practice. Wednesday uh, we had a, a rain shower early in the morning and then got really steamy out there. It was, it was hot and uh, we, we let the heat get to us there at the end of practice. But overall we've had a, had a good week of uh, work getting prepared for Northwestern. How's the injury front look? Uh, we're fairly healthy. Uh, you know, for this time of year, you're always going to have some bumps and bruises. So uh, right now we feel uh, feel like we're pretty fortunate as far as injuries go. Coach, good luck today. Thank you. That's head coach Scott Maxfield joining us on the Domino's pregame show. When Phil and I return, we'll bring Hunter Lively into the conversation and take a look around the Great American Conference. It's all coming up next on the Henderson State Radio Network. Carol Souvenir, stop by the Ready Bookstore located on the HSU campus and the Garrison Center. For your convenience, the Ready Bookstore is open before every Ready football game. And students, save money on textbooks at the Ready Bookstore, where you can purchase, rent, and sell back textbooks every day. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Friday. We also have HSU apparel for kids, gift items, and alumni items. Find us on Facebook at Ready Bookstore or online at www.hsubooks.com. At Domino's, we're more than just pizza, so mix it up with our chicken, stuffed cheesy bread, sandwiches, pastas, or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each, and we'll mix stand-up comedy with a robot. Stuffed cheesy bread and my act have a lot in common. They're both super cheesy. Tough crowd. Order any two or more of Domino's eight-piece chicken, stuffed cheesy breads, oven-baked sandwiches, pastas in a dish, or medium two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each. Two-item minimum. Handmade pan pizza may be extra. You must ask for this limited-time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Arkadelphia Super Smiles offers general dentistry for kids and young adults. Dr. Trevor Coffey and his staff look forward in treating your child and making sure they always have a super smile. Arkadelphia Super is located at 280 Professional Park Drive, Suite B in Arkadelphia. For an appointment, call 870-246-2828. And like always, our kids is accepted at Arkadelphia Super Smiles. Hi folks, Glenn Hill here with Century 21, and it's a great day for some football, and we've got a great football team to watch. We're lucky to have such a wonderful county with such awesome teams. Makes for a great place to live. Just ask anybody. We support our teams, and our Century 21 team wants to support you. The Century 21 was ranked number one in the top four categories of customer satisfaction by J.D. Powers. Hey, that's pretty nice. We want to be on your team. Call Century 21. This is Kevin Rogers, and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. And we welcome you back to the Domino's pregame show here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. Bill Ellison, along with R.J. Hawk, will be joined by Hunter Lively in just a moment. But first, here's the Star Spangled Banner, which is performed by the show band of Arkansas.
As always, a splendid performance by the show band of Arkansas. Let's talk here about uh, some changes undergoing on the ready defense right now. There are three changes in uh, starting positions for the ready defense as we bring Hunter Lively onto the broadcast. Hunter, you're talking about the right end, Randall Howard. He is stepping in front of Kentra Williams this week. Zach Richardson back at starting at uh, the Will linebacker position. And another change in the secondary for the Henderson State starters. Yeah, Randall Howard's a guy that, that comes in. He's been here a little while. He knows the schemes, and I think you'll see a, a very good production from him at defensive end today. And then you talk about Zach Richardson. He's a guy uh, who had a big game against Northwestern last week or last year. I'm sorry, uh, with the the block kick that got returned for a touchdown when the offense was kind of stalling. And then you bring up Jonathan Edward. He's a, he's a freshman, but this guy can play, guys. He uh he had that big muff punt that was recovered last week against ECU to kind of get the offense back on track. So I think these three guys are going to provide uh, a lot of key tackles and. and, and a lot of key play time today. When you talk about the defense of this ready team, RJ, right now the ready's allowing just 100 yards a game on the ground. That's second best in the GAC. They are third best against the pass, 180 yards a game. And overall, they allow just 281 yards of offense. That's second best in the Great American Conference. So we, we now the ready defense certainly looks improved upon last season and taking on a Northwestern club that's struggling to score points just 19 a game. Yeah, you know, when you look at this defense, talked with Coach Maxfield about it, and... and this is a front line that has recorded 30 tackles for loss this year. Just think about that. 30 tackles for loss in four games uh, with that front line. Not it's an only, average of over seven per game. Yeah, and not only that, but then they, they've got nine takeaways this year, whether it be an interception or a fumble, which ranks first in the Great American Conference. This ready defense is something that we haven't seen in the last two or three years, and it's a lot of fun to watch. And, and like Hunter said, uh, you've got Edward that's coming in to play his first collegiate game today. He was big last week. It'll be interesting to see uh, what uh, what he does today. And, and Hunter, this this would be a time we, we would ask you usually to put your doctor's coat on uh, and give us a, a health report for the Reddies, but it looks like right now the team is, for the most part, all nearly perfectly healthy. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, going back to last week, I mean, the team, you know, stayed healthy throughout last week's game. Really, the only person that we were kind of worried about was Adrian Tucker with that, that leg injury, but it looks like he's back suited up, ready to rock and roll today. It is a great day for football. What Here in the booth, it's actually a little cooler than yeah. usual here in what we usually call the sweat box, but the the, uh, the sun is already setting behind us uh, down on the field. It's bright sunshine. How does it feel down there on Ruggles Field here at Carpenter Higgins Stadium? It feels great, guys. It's it's amazing weather down here. I'm ready, ready to get this game started. All right. Well, it looks like the Reddies are about to come out of the locker room for the pregame introduction. And uh, we still await the arrival of the Northwestern Rangers. Right now, it looks like there's, what, about a dozen fans that have made yeah. their way from Alva it's for a long today's drive. game. It is a it's long eight, drive. It's eight plus hours to get down from Alva, Oklahoma. So we've got about eight and a half minutes left until the opening kickoff here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. We'll have a look around the Great American Conference after the break, and that includes the game across, across Highway 7 at packed Cliff Harris Stadium. Much more on the Domino's pregame show next here on the Reddy's Radio Network. Find your freedom with your new home with Jason Appleton, United Country Hometown Realtor. Nobody has more information available for your search to find that perfect home. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com. Take a virtual tour through all of the gorgeous properties. Check out the exclusive aerial views of the properties. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com and pick out your perfect home. Then call Jason Eddington at 870-45. Let Jason work with you to guide you through the maze of finding that home with the most modern and unique ways possible. Call Jason Eddington at 870-210-1445. Life is good in Arkadelphia. Wendy's presents Red in Best Food Forward. Hey, Red, can you help me make my online dating profile more mature? Well, that's a Wendy's smoked Gouda chicken sandwich, right? Try a foodie with a refined palate. Nice. And what did you do yesterday? I visited my mom. Ooh, family-oriented. And brought her my laundry. Roy, you're 34. And a half. Wendy's deliciously grown-up new smoked Gouda chicken layers. Smoky Gouda cheese, caramelized onion sauce, aioli on a soft brioche bun. Now that's at participating Wendy's for a limited time. Do you have an idea that you would like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist to work with. Print Mania also goes for a very amazing version. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street. or call 246 Print Mania. Proud supporters of Henderson State University. 
Hot Springs has a long history of birthday celebrations, but one of the most epic was on May 25, 1944, when Shirley Temple's famous dance partner Bill Bojangles Robinson decided to celebrate his 66th birthday by tap dancing in the middle of Central Avenue, the length of Bathhouse Road. What a Shirley plans to dance for the clubs and restaurants. Because the spa city is history city. This is Coach Scott Maxwell, and you are listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. Now the Domino's pregame show continues here at Carpenter Higgins Stadium. Phil Elson, RJ Hawk, Hunter Lively. This is and while listening to Ready Football, why not enjoy a fresh hot Domino's pizza? Call now at 870-246-246. 3131 or order online at dominoes.com. The Reddies entered today on a three way tie for first place in the Great American Conference. Both Harding and Washita also with three wins and no losses. Harding in action later on today against Southern Arkansas. The Mule Riders bring a rough two and two record right now tied for fifth place in the GAC. Meanwhile, across the street, an early kickoff here in Arkadelphia as Washita Baptist takes on Southwestern Oklahoma. Uh, by the way, that's the team the Reddies are visiting next weekend in Weatherford. Washita taking it to Southwestern 40 to 7. They're in the third quarter, about 10 minutes to play. A couple other games in action. Well, one other game in action. Southeastern Oklahoma playing out of conference against Bacona. That's uh, near the start of the second quarter already. Southeastern out to a 23 to nothing lead. Last week's opponent, East Central, travels uh, down into southern uh, into uh, Southern Nazarene to take on uh, the Crimson Storm. And uh, it's also UAM visiting Arkansas Tech in Russellville. That uh, kickoff at 6 o'clock. We mentioned Southern Arkansas and Harding, also a 6 p.m. kickoff. We'll have updates from the GAC scoreboard later on during the broadcast. But for right now, about five minutes until the opening kickoff, and the Reddies ready to emerge out of the locker room here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. We'll take our final break on the Domino's pregame show. When we come back, we've got the coin flip, we've got the kickoff, and the Reddies take on Northwestern Oklahoma on a splendid football Saturday in Arkadelphia. This is the this Reddies is Network. Uh, Steven. Who said that? Me, down here. Ugh, what are you, a yellow booger? I'm a banana slug, Steven. Room. I'm your sense of adventure. It's been a long time since we've had an adventure in the forest. Mom took me to the forest last year. I'm a slug, Steven. It took me a long time to get here. You're right. I should get up. Yeah, the forest is not that far away. Hey, Mom, come to the forest where the more adventurous you lives. Check out discovertheforest.org for cool places nearby. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. This is a public service announcement test from TakeMeFishing.org to determine if you need a fishing license and boat registration before heading out on the water. Let's begin. Are you a bear? Do you have a beak? Does your name rhyme with old beagle? Do you dart in front of cars? Here's a tough one. Do you have proof? Do you rub your body against things to mark them? Do you have web feet? No, I mean like a... Would you? Do you have fun? I'm not talking back here. Does your boat fly south for the winter with the other boats? Answer. You need to be licensed and registered because it helps local conservation efforts protect the very natural resources you enjoy boating and fishing in for generations to come. Do your part at TakeMeFishing.org. My name is Meera Batra and this is How I Live United. Many families have come to America for a better life. I advocate for these families with United Way. United Way empowers them to see opportunities available. We help them get involved with their kids, schools and networks within the community. My name is Meera Batra. I help families see opportunity. I don't just wear the shirt. Give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Hey, Ready Fans, this is Dijon Benton, and you're listening to Ready Football and Henderson State Radio Network. Ready captain that heads to midfield for the uh, coin toss here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. Phil Nelson with you, along with R.J. Hawk and Hunter Lively down on the sideline. The other ready captains today are uh, Zach Richardson, John Guerra, and Carlos Arredondo. It is a great day for football here in Carpenter Haygood. The Reddies enter with a 4 0 record. The
in conference and taking on a Northwestern Oklahoma you're you're exactly right that uh, this is a team that uh, they're trying to prove themselves in division two football and, and trying to get there today and I, I don't know if today would be the day if you want to say let's try to get that done but uh, we've seen stranger things happen that's for sure Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. We will listen to the Ready Football, the Ready Sports Network, KLXK FM, ESPN, 106.9 in Jerseys, red letters, and numbers, triple cut, black pants, or red pants. Red pants, black pants. They have set up at the 25 yard line for the opening kickoff. Speaking of specialists, it's Will Hoppy. Hoppy is at the 25 yard line for the opening kickoff. was playing five yards off the ball like they've done all year, but we're going to throw it out to David and see what he can do. Back in the 30s, it's a loss. Of
Wayne came up with a couple of over at the 75 yard line. Gives me a gain of about a yard.
ಅಂದರೆ ತುಂಬ ಜನ ಸಿಗ್ತದೆ ಮತ್ತು ಬೇಗ ಬಂದು ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೋದು ಆದರೆ ಇಂಟರ್ನೆಟ್ ಅಂದರೆ ನಾವು ಕೂತಲ್ಲಿ ಕೇಳೋ ಮಾತಾಡೋ ಕೂಡ ಆಗೋಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಜನ ಕೂತ್ಕೊಂಡು ಇದ್ದರೆ ಅಷ್ಟು ಜ Northwestern territory where they haven't been all day. Let's bring on Hunter Lapp. He's out of the sideline. Hunter is looking like he's very risky. He's got some time for the rain so far. Yeah, the defense is kind of play well. Guys, they watch all set.
the Olympics was just what they did that time to say, oh, you know what? Thank 
First one today. They're going for it. Fourth and
baseball broadcaster as well that whenever a, a fly ball is hit to center field, they, they just look at you usually call it a can of corn, right? That was. That was a can of corn, so he just stood there and let it come to him. He had no, there was no uh, hardship in that one whatsoever, and uh, he was able to get the interception. The Rangers nothing on the Randy Radio Network. At Domino's, we're more than just pizza, so mix it up with our chicken, stuffed cheesy bread, sandwiches, pastas, or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each, and we'll make stand-up comedy with a robot. Stuffed cheesy bread and my ass have all my in common. They're both super cheesy. <laughs> Top Order any two or more of Domino's eight-piece chicken, stuffed cheesy breads, oven-baked sandwiches, pastas in a dish, or medium two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each. Two-item and a handmade pan pizza may be extra. You must ask for this limited time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. Ready for another season of hard-hitting game day parties? <laughs> Hunger is ready, ready to strike without mercy. Whether you join the party at a tailgate or in your own living room, Subway Catering's lineup includes giant subs, sandwich platters, cookie platters, chips and drinks, everything you need to crush hunger and score a touchdown for football fans everywhere. So get in there. Subway, eat fresh. Catering orders must be placed 24 hours in advance. See participating score for details. Hi, this is Athletic, and you're listening to Henderson State Football on the Ready Sports Network. Hey, Ready fans, are you interested in reserved seats with free soda and popcorn at halftime? The Access Donor Room, where you can join the Ready Club to support Henderson State Athletics. Enjoy in great seats for the game. Going for 250 bucks per seat, you can enjoy five great home games with VIP treatment. All you got to do is call 870-230-5072 and join the Ready Club. And please ask for Athletic Director Sean Jones. Three yards, four plays for a 39-yard field goal by Keith. We get some of the kickoff and return from the three by Deshaun Gordon. Gordon angles to the far side and drops at the 20-yard line. Returns at 17 yards. 
And it's Northwestern's football. I mean, look at this Northwestern offense right now. And it looks like they are going to have trouble moving the football any way possible. They have not trusted the arm of Ty Hooper very much yet. Yeah, no, they really haven't. And, and they're, the thing about it is they're not going to be able to run the football, right? They've already proven that. So far in this game, rushing the football, Northwestern has rushed the ball for negative one yards. Another running back in there is Justin Lord. Lord lines up behind Hooper, takes the snap, QB keeper near side, not a lot of, <laughs> again, not a lot of room. Hooper gave himself up. He just dropped down to his knees for a sack. It's a sack. So there's a credit back to uh, the closest tackle. It looks like Cape Lopez. Loss of one yard, brings up second down to the left. Well, I think this is a read option, and, and he became a runner when he touched the ball. It doesn't, it doesn't get counted as a sack, I don't believe. With the third option to get yourself up. Yeah, I mean. Second down and 11 from the left hash. The running back flushed out to the right. Now the handoff to the running back. Right up the middle of the flag thrown after the tackle was made by Dijon Benton. Just to pull on the uh, run by the Rangers. 69 on the offense. 10-yard penalty. Previous spot. The left guard, Jose Garcia, 10-yard holding penalty. Garcia is the largest man on the football field, RJ. Six foot five, 348 pounds. This Rangers offensive line does have some size. Yeah, they really do. When you look at their offensive line, uh, you look at 290, 348, 300, 275, and 310 across the board. Those are some, some pretty big guys. And height-wise, they're big as well. 6'3", 6'5", 6'4", 6'1", and 6'4". I mean, uh, there's a couple of instances where the running backs are nearly a foot shorter yeah. than a couple of the offensive linemen. That includes the current running back, more than 5'8", 181 pounds of junior. Second and 19, back from the row nine. Northwestern takes the snap. Extra man breaks free and thrown in the pocket out of bounds. Well, that'll be intense. Do I see an official pulling the flag out? He had trouble getting the handkerchief out of the flag in the end zone. Will signify grounding the football in the end zone for a safety. The man who broke free and forced this pass was Blake Lopez. In the end zone, to the play, is a safety. Uh, pardon me, Lawson Schultz, the, the linebacker, broke free on the on the blitz, and Hooper, he didn't know what to do with himself. He just threw it, I guess, to where he thought a receiver would be close to, so it could just not be called grounded. But that was an easy call. Yeah, no, that was a really easy call. Schultz came running through that, the heart of that offensive line and was able to you know, get his hands on him, and Hooper didn't know, like you said, didn't know where to go with the football. And, just do it away now. If he would have gotten that back to the original line of scrimmage and thrown it out of bounds, it wouldn't have been grounding. But he literally threw it in of him, which was about a two-yard pass uh, to, the, to the sideline. Shows really did catch it off guard. Let's go down to Hunter Lawson with a ready sideline report. Hunter. Yeah, guys, Lawson shows just fired through and made a play. I'm really impressed with the speed of him and Josh Davis. Both. Those two guys are this evening. I, didn't, I didn't think that they were going to be as fast as what they are, but, you know, over the progression of the season, these guys, it looks like they're getting faster and faster every week with their pressure. But does it seem, Hunter, that our team, does it seem like the ready defense is a step quicker than last season? Yeah, it's by yeah. far. I've said that all the Yeah, definitely. It, it does look like that, guys. Well, the ready defense gets two points. Uh, that gives them nine points for the season. They'd also blocked the punt in the last home game, and that was returned for a touchdown by Trayvon Del Rio. So a productive defense for certain for Henderson, looking at a 19 to nothing lead. And the ready offense got this football back. Now yeah, they're going to get the football back and with great field position because they're going to kick off. Uh, they're going to do that punt kick. You know, it's a free kick from the 20-yard line. That's Will Hawkins, also the punter and the place kicker, so he'll be out there one way or the other. Got to punt it from the 20. Right foot punt, high end over end kick. Fair catch called for at the 36 yard line. And uh, downed immediately. Donovan McLeod on the special teams catch for Henderson State. First down for the Rennies with, uh, again, good field position. Yeah, McLeod made that catch. And 
Uh, he probably could have run with a little bit. Had plenty of time, but I, I think when you're a special teams guy that's not used to catching the ball like that, and you don't want to make any mistakes. I think in that, in that case, your orders yeah. are catch it and go down. Yeah, don't do much with it. Don't try to do too much. Let the ready offense do a lot with it. Tight formation for Kevin Rogers. Four receivers and a single back with Rodney Bryson. First down from their 36. Rogers back to throw. In the backfield to Bryson. Catches room to run. Big Zag passed another tackler, but is dropped at the 44-yard line. That's a gain of eight yards on first down to Bryson. Second and short for Henderson. Bryson is getting a lot of hooks out of the backfield. That's already three catches for Bryson. Now he gets a handoff up the middle. First down pass to 50. 45. Lowered his head. Makes it to the 41. Good run there by Bryson. Henderson State in Northwestern Territory. Well, they're making it look too easy with this running game. I mean, he's he's running straight up the middle and, and getting big yards. 13 yards to Bryson. And it's first down to one. Gets another handoff. Nice change of direction of the backfield. Goes over the 35. Makes it to the 32. Gain of nine yards to Bryson. He's doing the heavy lift from the outside linebacker David Boatwright on the stop for the Rangers. Rodgers quickly up to the line. Second down and short. Just turns and hands it off to Bryson. Again, change of direction. Stretching near side past it. Looks like he had it. He's down the floor. He shut into the ready bench. It is a first down. He was knocked out at the 29. Gain of three yards. And the Reddies move the It's Josh Miller as the running back and McDonald has the down. Miller, two hands on the football, follows the five and made it just. inside the State Farm Red Zone. And that's the third time that play-action pass has worked, uh, where they fake it to McDonald, and this time it went to, to Davis. First down from the six. McDonald gets the carry. Hit after the transfer. Not much there. Made it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on first down for McDonald. That's the first time that the Reddies are stopped for uh, less than positive yardage on this drive. And pretty much a bread-and-butter play to McDonald right up the gut. Three receivers line up to the right side. For snap, fade route, leaps in the air, catches into the end zone. Third touchdown for Joseph Snap. Can you say conference player of the week? Because that's what he's going for right now. That's his third touchdown reception of the ball game. Mr. Red Zone right now is Joseph Snap, who came in with two touchdowns on the season. He has three before or even mid-May through the second quarter. And Henderson leading 25 to nothing. A 64-yard eight-play drive capped off by the Houston Ray extra point. We'll step aside from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. 9.46 to play in the first half. The Henderson State Reddies lead Northwestern 26 to nothing. This is Henderson State Football on the Ready Radio Network. Arkadelphia Super Smiles offers general dentistry for kids and young adults. Dr. Trevor Coffey and his staff look forward in treating your child and making sure they always have a super smile. Arkadelphia Super Smitty Professional Park Drive, Suite B in Arkadelphia. For an appointment, call 870-246-2828. And like always, our kids is accepted at Arkadelphia Super Smiles. Vince Lombardi and Paul Horning made history on the football field and deals on the golf course. In 1962, they met in the spa city to negotiate the all-purpose backs contract during a round of golf. Lombardi said, you didn't have that good of a year. Horning replied, I won MVP of the league. Doesn't that count for anything? Together, they won three league championships, a Super Bowl, and busts in the Football Hall of Fame. Plan your golf course deals today at hotsprings.org because the spa city is sports city. This is Blake Lopez, and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. 
Reddy's lead 26 to nothing with Houston Ray, a booming kickoff halfway into the back of the end zone. And after making the catch in the end zone, dropping to a knee is Reed Miller. So the Rangers will get the football at the 20 yard line with Henderson up 26 to nothing. Our assistant athletic director, Frank Keenan, is uh, also handling all the social media for uh, Henderson State. And he's big into this hashtag thing. He, he, he created the hashtag I'm ready. Well, I think he needs to just go ahead and start the hashtag oh snap. Oh snap. Oh snap. It has been a uh, snap worthy day for Joseph. Five catches, three for touchdowns. All of them inside the 20. Ty Hooper takes the snap for Northwestern. Short gain on a handoff right up the middle. Call it a two yard gain. And uh, right now, Northwestern State's playbook is as uh, easy to read as the ABCs right now. Not a lot there for Northwestern. Even the one razzle-dazzle play they tried, RJ, the flea flicker, turned into an easy interception for Kendrick Burns and the Reddy secondary. Yeah, no, and that was and that was an easy interception, too. That, he just stood there, and it came right to him. I mean, he didn't have to move. Running back is Morris with a wide receiver in motion in front of the quarterback. Hooper takes a low snap, drops back. He's pressured. He throws it away into the ready bench. He had a, a receiver running a crossing pattern in front there, Justin Shanbacker, but that was a few yards out of Shanbacker's reach. Third down and long for Northwestern. Northwestern right now held to 16 total yards of offense in this first half. There's a little more than nine minutes to play in the first half. And uh, so far, Northwestern has had, as far as yardage, a, a first down and a half. That's it. Yeah, they uh, really, when you look at the, at the rushing department, they, they haven't rushed yards this entire ballgame. They've only passed for 16 yards. It's not been a good offensive day for Northwestern. Ready to bring the house on three on third and nine. And another Pat Hooper. That's intentional grounding and again. It looked like it is, and the official now takes a look, throws the flag, and Hooper will be called for grounding the ball intentionally for a second time. Pressure from the far wing, and uh, that was... Bot foul. Loss of down. I mean, you, you mentioned I mentioned the, the script offensively for Northwestern, the script defensively for Henderson right now. If you're if you're Scott Maxfield, who's calling the plays defensively for Henderson State, you just you're licking your chops. Oh yeah, as you say, sure. pin those ears back and bring the house on third and long. And really, he's not even bringing any people. He's just bringing loss and shoals. I mean, if you think about it, every time there's been uh, a loss of down or a uh, intentional grounding, it's been because of loss and shoals. Third time, Will Hawkins will punt out of his own end zone. The snap back to Hawkins, a high short and over end kick. This will just barely make it past the 30 yard line where Darius Davis comes up for a fair catch. It was about an 18 yard punt for Will Hawkins. He was going to get a workout for that right leg today. Let's go back down to Hunter Lively on the sideline and uh, I'm starting to receive a lot of tweets, Hunter, on one Joseph Snap who, uh, pointer football right now, they're happy for him at uh, his old high school. Well, the thing you got to love about Joseph Snap is not only is he athletic, but he also runs great routes. He's very technically sound, and that's what allows him to get tons of separation from the defender. It's one thing that I took from your interview with, with, uh, with Scott Maxfield today, RJ, is that Snap is a guy who can kind of do a little bit of everything yeah. from that wide receiver position. Ryan McDonald is the running back. Mark Chouse put in motion in front of Kevin Rogers. Lines up to next to Joseph Snap on the left side. The snap, a short pass to McDonald with room to run past the 30, 25, over the 20, where he's dragged down by an ankle at the 14. Yeah. Call it the 16-yard line is where uh, McDonald made it to. Great pass play. And Henderson stayed after a gain of 16, is inside the State Farm red zone again. McDonald in the backfield with Rodgers in the shotgun again. Low snap. Hands to McDonald. Steps past a man of the 15. Lowers the head. He's inside the 10. Made it to the 9. That's tough yardage for Ryan McDonald. Seven yards of positivity. Henderson's inside the 10-yard line. I think Ryan McDonald broke his helmet. He's carrying it off, and he was something's wrong with it. Well, as often as he lowers his head, yeah. I guess that might happen. Bryson puts in, uh, goes in for McDonald. Now the tunnel screen to Darius Davis, who drops the ball around the 10. He had a man hanging on his back right after he touched the football. Wouldn't have been a lot there for Davis. Might have had a couple of yards. Henderson down third 
and goal. You know, going back to a couple plays ago with Ryan McDonald on that catch that he just, you know, he ran for uh, about 25 yards. That's the difference between Henderson State and Northwestern. They put pressure on Kevin Rogers instead of having to look downfield. He had Ryan McDonald there. Flats as a safety valve. He just threw it off to him. A little trouble with the uh, with uh, the ins and the outs for Northwestern. Henderson calls for the play and a timeout for Northwestern, where they had a little trouble with the substitution. They had guys going in, going out, and weren't quite sure what to do. We'll step aside for a break on the timeout from Carpenter Higgins Stadium in Arkadelphia with 8:17 to play in the first half. Henderson State leads Northwestern Oklahoma 26 to nothing. This is Ready Football on the Ready Radio Network. Don't be sidelined due to your injury. The orthopedic team at Texarkana Surgery Center with doctors Richard Hilborn, Trey Mitchell, Doug Thompson, and Tom Young are here to get you back in the game. Texarkana Surgery Center, taking special care of our community for over 18 years. Arkadelphia Super Smiles offers general dentistry for kids and young adults. Dr. Trevor Coffey and his staff look forward in treating your child and making sure they always have a super smile. Arkadelphia Super Smiles is located at 280 Professional Park Drive, Suite B in Arkadelphia. For an appointment, call 870-246-2828. And like always, our kids is accepted at Arkadelphia Super Smiles. Hey, Ready fans, this is Cameron Devereaux, and you are listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. A Henderson State drive that started at their own 31-yard line has brought them inside the 10, in fact, right at the 10, third down and four for Kevin Rogers and the Ready offense. Moving left to right, they lead 26 to nothing midway through the second quarter, battling the one and three Rangers of Northwestern Oklahoma. Kevin Rogers on the right hash, out of the shotgun with a blocking back in. For, gets the carry, room to run up the middle. The hole parts, and he runs right in for the ready touchdown. That was way too easy. There was not a defender within earshot of Rodney Bryson. As Bryson runs it in for his third touchdown of the season, and the Reddies lead 32 to nothing. Tons of time to play. Yeah, that, I mean, that was just a simple off-right tackle. Uh, touchdown, he was able to run it in from nine yards out. 44 yards for Bryson, a nine-yard rush. Houston Ray adds the pressure, and with 8-12 to play in the first half at Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, the Henderson State Reddies have a 33 to nothing lead over the Rangers of Northwestern Oklahoma State as we step aside for a break on the Ready Radio Network. For Henderson State Ready Apparel and Souvenirs, stop by the Ready Bookstore located on the HSU campus and the Garrison Center. For your convenience, the Ready Bookstore is open before every Ready football game. And students, save money on textbooks at the Ready Bookstore, where you can purchase, rent, and sell back textbooks every day. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Friday. We also have HSU apparel for kids, gift items, and alumni items. Find us on Facebook at Ready Bookstore or online at www. HSUbooks.com. SEM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for nearly 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus and the design of the new dining hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Halls. This semester, SEM Architects have been privileged to work on the restoration of Proctor Hall and the recently completed interior renovation of Garrison Center's Grand Ballroom. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial, interior design, historic preservation, and master planning projects at SEMarchitects.com. And on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, SCM Architects is a proud sponsor of Ready Athletics. Hey, this is Chris King, and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. Houston Rays kickoff return to the 21-yard line by Deshaun Gordon. Gordon tackled by the turf here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium. He just slipped. Henderson State leads 33 to nothing. Second quarter, eight minutes, five seconds to play. And right now, one of the questions, RJ, how many points can the Reddy score in this game? <laughs> I, I mean, at the rate they're going, I mean, they've only scored 33 so far, in the, and we've still got eight minutes left in the half, and uh, they could well score 40 in, the, in this half. What about the idea that Henderson State has double the amount of points that Northwestern State has yards? Yeah. Handed off, short gain up the middle as they're stacking them up. That is Henry Davis, the nose tackle on the initial hit. 
Northwestern continues. I mean, it's like Sisyphus right now. Roll that boulder up the mountain, back down on you. They've continued to try to run the ball, but there just hasn't been much there. That was a gain of three yards, second and seven. And when you talk about total yards for Northwestern, they've got 16 right now. 16 compared to 33 ready points. So the ratio is better than two to one on points for the Reddies and yards for the Rangers. Reddies with over 200 yards of total offense. Ty Hooper again will hand it off. And a little positive yardage for Malcolm Robinson before getting hit on the helmet at the 26-yard line. Two yards for Malcolm Robinson, the Little Rock native, and it brings up third down and five. Only one first down for the Rangers to this point. Now, they had the first first down of the game. Yeah, neither. you're right. They looked like the better team to start the game. Anderson's opening two drives stalled before first down came. And then they've reeled off 33 consecutive points. Hooper will throw with an empty set. The Reddies have been bringing an extra rusher on third down and long. They bring him again. Hooper gets rid of the football to nobody. Threw it between three ready secondary members. His wide receivers were outside the defense. And that zips between the fivesome and already the, the, the maroon jerseys were closer to the football than the white jerseys there. Fourth down and another punt for Will Hawkins. I, I would probably venture to say at this race, especially at the ready score right here, we probably won't see Kevin Rogers in the second half. It's one of those days where you can compile the stats. Yeah. Just get those stats going. Kevin with 133 yards, three touchdowns. Will Hawkins has been a busy punter. This is already his fifth punt, and it's returned from the 39 by Darius Davis. Davis steps out of a tackle at the 40, out of bounds at the 44. About a six-yard return by Darius Davis. Anderson gets another second quarter possession with a 33 to nothing lead. Well, let's go down to Hunter Lively on the sideline for a sideline report. And Hunter, uh, been fun so far, hasn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely, guys. And uh, things are getting just a little chippy down here. You can tell these Northwestern players are getting a little frustrated. So uh, these referees are going to have to keep an eye on things. We've already seen Darius Davis get into a little scuffle with one of their defensive backs. And now Jonathan Edward on that last punt return. Yeah, you got to hold your... Got to hold your attitudes if you're Henderson State. Rodgers in the shotgun with Jaquan Cole behind him. Fake to Cole. Rodgers deep over the middle looking for Davis. Catch made inside the 20. He's all the way in. Touchdown, Reddies. 53-yard pass play to Darius Davis. On the play fake to Jaquan Cole. Rodgers with his fourth touchdown of the day. Darius Davis with his 39 to nothing. Wow. That, that, that's impressive. Well, that, uh, that play fake that Rodgers and Davis have uh, nearly perfected this season is a thing of beauty to watch when it works, and it works quite a bit. A one-play drive for the Reddies, 53 yards. Houston Ray with another point after. And as we step aside for a break, here from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, 6.17 to play, second quarter, Henderson State 40. Oklahoma, nothing. This is Henderson State Football on the Ready Radio Network. The American Legion. We're a powerful force for the nation. We believe strongly in supporting the children of America. Our youth programs include American Legion Baseball, Junior Shooting Sports, Boys and Girls State, the Oratorical Scholarship Program, support for scouting, and many others. We support and promote citizenship and integrity in America's future leaders. Go to legion.org to find out more about the American Legion's commitment of service to America. My name is Meera Batra and this is How I Live United. Many families have come to America for a better life. I advocate for these families with United Way. United Way empowers them to see opportunities available. We help them get involved with their kids, schools and network within the community. My name is Meera Batra. I help families see opportunity and succeed. I don't just wear the shirt. I live it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. This is Coach Mike Vilarovic, and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. Christian Latouf now doing the place kicking for Henderson on kickoffs. 
And the two boots that back to the six, return past the 15-20, and dropped at about the 21-yard line. And Reddy is slow to get up. Kenrick Burns remained on his back for an extra few moments. Kenrick gets up to his feet. He will stay on the field for the first play of the upcoming drive by the Northwestern Rangers. Right now, the Rangers getting run off the field here at Carpenter Haygood. They trail the Reddies 40 to nothing. There are still a little over six minutes to play in the first half. You realize that last year's game between these two, it was 40 in that game. That was, last a full, year. that was a full final. Yeah. And it's not even half the final today, the way things are looking for Henderson. Ty Hooper with a single back will hand it off. Up the gut past the 23, and now pushed backwards back to the initial line of scrimmage for a very short gain, if there is a gain at all. That is uh, Zachary Doyle, who is stopped. And uh, there is another ready slow to get up. So that'll give us a moment, 10 seconds for station identification. This network, KYXK FM, ESPN 106.9 in Gurdon, Arkadelphia, and KARN 9, 920, the sports animal in Little Rock. Back inside Carpenter Higgins Stadium where the Henderson State Reddies lead 40 to nothing over the Northwestern Rangers. Phil Nelson, RJ Hawk, Hunter Lively is on the sideline and right now there is an injured Reddy down at the 20 yard line to our right on the special teams play for Henderson State. Pardon me, on the defense play for Henderson State. We'll go down to Hunter Lively. Hunter's got a better look at that. Hunter, can you see who that is on the field? Yeah, guys, it's Kendrick Burns and you, you mentioned that earlier on that last play he was a little slow to get up. I think he may have just got the wind knocked out of him, I'm not 100% not sure. He's, not, he's holding his midsection, but they're getting him off on his own power right now. Well, I, I just remember the, the scene. The, the only, you don't ever see Coach Maxfield walk out on the field to check an injury. But last year when he went out there to check on, on Robert in the end zone, you always know it's something serious if, if Coach Max walks out there. And, and I just saw him do that, and I was thinking, oh, no, it can't be good. Well, Burns able to walk off the field under his own power. In the backfield, Zachary Doyle, along with the quarterback, Ty Hooper. Wide receiver Gordon put in motion. The pass goes to Gordon in the backfield. Quickly dragged down by Gary Vines. There wasn't a lot of room. Vines is the reason. There wasn't much room there. He pounced on him right after the catch. It's a loss of a few yards. Put in the back of the 20. And it's third down and 15 for the Rangers. You know, when you look at the Rangers, Phil, and what they've done as a team... You know, they, they've had, a, you know, especially throwing the football, not not too bad throwing. You know, Ty Hooper's 323 yards passing this year, uh, but he only has been the starter for two. This is his third game. And so far, Hooper with three completions for 13 yards. Another handoff on third and long, and no room whatsoever for Doyle to do anything. Get back to the line of scrimmage, no gain on third down. I mean, it... it doesn't it has the feeling like Northwestern has come in here just hoping that nobody gets hurt we're seeing their offense right now running running plays on third and long and let's be honest here third and long pass plays haven't worked for them either no they haven't I mean they have 17 total yards of offense so far in this game the Reddies have scored 14 points in the first quarter 26 in the second quarter Will Hawkins continues his busy day with a low line drive punt. Bounces past Darius Davis inside the 40. Rolls out of bounds near the 34-yard line. So that'll push the Reddies back just a little bit to the 34. By the way, we didn't mention this, but, uh, well, I, I said that. Uh, Darius Davis now needs five yards, and he will become the all-time leading receiver in Arkansas collegiate football history. How about that? Yep, that would be saying something. 86 yards for Davis today. And that gives Darius 2,930 yards over his illustrious career here at, uh, at Henderson State University. The senior out of Frisco, Texas, has uh, caught a 53-yard touchdown on the last scoring play for the Reddies. They're up 40 to nothing. Kevin Rogers remains in the game. It's a handoff to Dustin Holland riding right in. He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage. He had a blocker right in front of him. It looked like the blocker is what he ran into. And uh, no gain on first down for the Rennies. Trying to just mix it up a little bit. 
Well, like he, I think you want to see everybody get involved right now. This so far has been the Joseph Snap and Darius Davis show. It's a handoff in second and ten. That's Bryson on a dive up the middle to the 39-yard line. Gains about five yards. It's third and five. Bryson, a leading rusher for the Reddies now, 49 yards on eight carries. Rodney came in as the leading rusher on the season for the Reddies. He had one more yard than Jaquan Cole, 20, 254 to 253. Rodgers back to throw over the middle. Catch is made at the 40. First down past the 50 over to the far side to the 45-yard line. And uh, that was a uh, catch and run for a first down by James Jackson. A yeah, sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. You're going to start seeing a lot more new faces in the ball game as A.J. Tucker now checks in. Tucker wide to the right side. Sets up next to Holland in the slot. Rodgers a pass to the far wing for snap over the 40-yard line. Flag down back of the 43. Snap out of bounds at the 36. It'll be about a 10-yard gain to the play holds. Short pass play to snap. We haven't seen snap too often on the screen plays. Low the waist, number 13 on the offense. 15-yard penalty. It's wide receiver Carlos Arredondo on the low block penalty on the Henderson offense. The Reddies have been uh, whistled for a few more penalties than you'd like to see. Right now, that'd be the only negative, I think, in this game. That's their fourth penalty. You know, all four of them come from the offense. You know what I find interesting is that when the Reddies are on offense, Coach V is just up here. He, I mean, he's the head coach, and Coach Maxwell stands at the other end and just kind of watches and, and takes his headset off. Second and 21, Rodgers back to throw. His pass is batted in the air and falls incomplete right near the 31-yard line. One of the big defensive linemen for the uh, Rangers got his hand on that. It was Donovan Guidry, a 250-pound senior. We've got his left hand on the football from Rodgers, and Kevin now on third and 20. But uh, what I was saying is Coach Maxfield goes to one end of the field and lets Coach V call the offense, and when the Reddies are on defense, Coach Maxfield jumps back into that head coach role. Rodgers back to throw in third and 21. Over the middle looking for Holland. Catch made. First down inside the 35-yard line. Down to the 31 is Dustin Holland. Good pass over the middle. That had, added Holland showing that leaping ability. And Henderson moves the chains on third and long. Yeah, that was a nice catch by Holland. You know, he had a big catch earlier in the ball game that got negated because of a holding call, and he made a, he made another big. Starts to Holland. Now the give to Rodney Bryson steps out of a tackle at the 25. First down, 12 yard gain down to the 20. That ankle tackle doesn't bring Bryson down, especially when he gets that good head of steam. Henderson with a first down at the 20. They're inside the State Farm Red Zone, sponsored by David Boston Insurance. Call David Boston Insurance at 870-246-5111. Looking for a 47-point lead in the first half. Snap to Rogers. Pitch play to Davis, stretching it to the far side. Out of bounds at the 20, so no game for Darius. These plays, this, we, it's a short play or a handoff to Darius. Haven't really worked very often. It's the long pass play that worked for Davis when he separates past the secondary. Second down and 10. Clock puts in motion at 2.05. Bryce in the single back. Trips to the near side of the field. Kevin takes the snap. Back to throw. He throws to the far wing. In the end zone. And the catch is dropped. It was a nice attempt. Uh, by the receiver over on the far side of the play, Zan Jones. But uh, that's probably the best coverage we've seen on a ready wide receiver. Reggie Winfield, a junior from Wichita, makes the stop on the uh, on the play out of the defensive uh, out of the the defensive back position. You know, we've called names of all all these players. One guy we haven't really heard from today is Mark Chaus. Chaus is in the slot to the left of Rogers, next to Snap. Third and ten from the 20. Rodgers back to throw. Rodgers rolls to his right, throws short over the middle. Snap with a catch and dragged down by the shoulder pad at the 16. Gain of five yards, and this is where Henderson quite often goes for it, but already up by 40. They'll have Houston Ray come on for a short field goal. Let the kicker come on and, and, and do something. But, you know, I mean, heck, he was the Great American Conference Player of the Week this week, and he's right in the middle of the field. It's not like he's on a hash. He's... This, is, this ought to be an easy one for him. He's lined straight up with it. About a 25-yard field goal attempt for Ray. It was good from 39 earlier. 
The kick is up, and the kick by Houston Ray is no good. Wow. He pulled it wide to the left. Just the second miss for Ray this season. A surprising miss and a short field goal attempt. Leaves the Reddies with a 40 to nothing lead. A minute 13 to play in the first half. And we go down for a ready sideline report with Hunter Lively. Hey guys, you can tell that Houston Ray is visibly upset with himself after uh, missing that last field goal. But Coach Fiskus just went over to him, patted him on the butt and said, come on son, it's all right. So not too much pressure in these situations for Ray, but certainly when the tougher portion of the schedule comes up later on this season and the Reddies will play Harding here at Carpenter Haygood the next home game on the 25th. They go to El Dorado to play Southern Arkansas on the 8th of November. Of course, the Battle of the Ravine. That right leg of Houston Ray could come up big. Ty Hooper throws out of the backfield and his pass is dropped. A perfect pass right into the hands of Jerry and Tudman who drops it at the 24. Second and 10 for the Rangers from their own 20. No, I don't think he dropped it. I think it it hit off his face mask. It, it literally just hit off his face mask and it got deflected away. He wasn't ready for it. Well, if your plan is to make a catch, usually using your hands would help. Yeah. Second down and 10 for Ty Hooper. Hooper, 3 of 10 for 13 yards. Takes the snap. Reddies bring the blitz. And the pass by Hooper to the far side. He throws it right into an assistant coach. Another flag down. That might be another grounding penalty on Hooper. 77 nope. on the offense. Holding on an offensive lineman. That was the center, Austin Mailey, on the uh, holding call. And that's going to be way back there. That's going to be a spot penalty that it's going to back him up. It's going to back him up all the way to the 10-yard line. Really, with the, the, the 37 yards of penalties that Northwestern has piled up, they have negative yardage today. It would be negative 20 yards Oof. if you count the penalties. 17 yards total offense for Northwestern. That does not count the 37 yards on penalties. Actually, this last penalty will, will put it at 47 yards of penalties. 10 more yards tacked on. Hooper on second and 20. We're going to hand it off. Up the middle, short gain for Tudman. Tudman to the 11-yard line, one yard on the carry. We're going to have a, uh, a fun Zeiser Wealth halftime show. Of course, going through the statistics after this first half will be uh, interesting to read. And then we'll be joined by Bobby Jones, yeah, the uh, Mr. Do-Everything here at Henderson, uh, who was inducted into the Hall of Honor he, earlier today. He's the utility player for... Uh, Henderson State, and uh, it'd be interesting to catch up with him. You know, we used to call him Boss, well, and actually, I think we might. He wouldn't have liked that. I, I think we still do, uh, since he's the CFO for Henderson State. But uh, that's right. His name's on the checks. Yes, but uh, uh, interested to see what he's been up to. He's now a Hall of Honor uh, inductee, and one of eleven members inducted yeah. today. So it'll be good to catch up with him and and see what uh, how everything's been. But and really get his thoughts on the Reddies. That you know, he's. He's the only person of his age, and I'm not trying to single anybody out, but he is so active on Twitter. Uh, you don't see a lot of older people that, that uh, are, are active on the social media, there may be Facebook, but well, Bobby Jones has the Facebook and the Twitter rocking and rolling, and, and when the Reddies are on the road, he's tweeting and, and talking about those Reddies. So. Well, and he's got my favorite uh, Henderson State geared uh, Twitter handle, which yeah. is at Old Ready. Yeah. Not Old Ready. No. Old Ready. Yeah, I like it. And uh, so he's one of my favorite guys here, and we'll talk to him uh, at halftime. 50 seconds left for Northwestern to do some damage, and a handoff to Tubman running over right tackle over the 15 to the 16 yard line. Gain of five yards on third down. It'll bring up fourth, and they're going to have to punt once again. 44 seconds remain, so Henderson will get a, another possession. Just kind of wonder what they'll attempt to do with it and uh, Northwestern heading to the far sideline they still have one timeout remaining Thought for a moment they might have used it but they did not Henderson used the timeout instead let's go down to Hunter on the sidelines hey guys I've got an update on Kendrick Burns talked to the athletic trainer Rob Redding and he's dealing with the case of bruised ribs and his return in the second half is questionable so I doubt you'd see him play a whole lot being one of the starters yeah I would imagine since he he's already got his interception for the day and the Reddies lead right now 40 to nothing. I imagine you just might as well try to get some other ex some experience for some other guys. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to have Rodgers come out of the game with just 232 yards of passing, but, I mean, up by 40 points. 
there's not too much of a reason unless you're just looking to compile some more big numbers for Ryan. Already big numbers, four touchdowns for Kevin today. Three of them to Joseph Snap. Will Hawkins will punt from his one. Snap back, high kick. And back to the 46 in Henderson territory, Darius Davis tries to split a couple of tacklers, spinning to the 47 in Northwestern territory, dragged down at the 50. They'll only give him forward progress to the 47, about a six-yard return for Davis. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think the Reddies try to score one more time before halftime? I, I, you know what? I, I honestly think they will try to do something with the football rather than just sit on it. That's not... That's not, that's, that's not how they do it no. in the first half. I think in the second half you might see a little bit more of a, of a, a deliberate attack. Because I can't imagine we're going to see Kevin Rogers and any of these starters out in the, in the second half. Maybe the running backs, but uh, that's about it. Northwestern keeping three men very deep. McDonald in as the running back for Rogers. Snap to Kevin. Fakes the handoff. Rogers looking deep. Rodgers gets rid of the football deep in the air and overthrows the target. Double coverage on Darius Davis at the 15. They were trying to do something special. They were looking for, for pay dirt. Well, they put, a, they put triple coverage on Darius Davis, and and Kevin was eyeing him. He, Joseph Snap was running a corner route, and he only had single coverage, but it was on the other side of the field, and I think the best option was Davis right there, even though he had double coverage on him. Well, the coverage comes a little closer to the line as Rodgers takes a low snap. Over the middle short, and the juggling catch made after a five-yard initial push by A.J. Smith. Smith to the 45-yard line, gain of four yards. I'm bring up third down, and got a timeout, Henderson State. Henderson calls a timeout with 15 seconds left in the half, leading 40 to nothing. Now look at third down and about seven. Reddies have converted on four of nine third downs today. Not a surprise to see the Reddies try to score in this last possession of the half, RJ, because I think you're right. I think this will be the last time that we see Rodgers and many of the starters get on the field today. Yeah, and, and you know, coach, coaches told me before that, um, you know, guys like Kevin Rodgers and Darius Davis, those guys, I mean, this is their last year. Uh, I mean, they want to get as many snaps as they can as – uh, in their senior season, and, and yeah, the wins are good, but they they still want to play football, and, and uh, you know by doing this, this allows for them for them to do that, and and uh, you just got to stop them. That's the thing. That's when you look at uh, uh, the opposing team. Yeah, some people say, well, you're running up the score. Well, stop them, uh, and and that's kind of the approach that uh, Henderson takes sometimes. Well, the, the Rennies haven't done anything that would reek of unsportsmanlike conduct at all. No. I, mean, I think they've they really done what they would do to almost any team at this point, which is continue to play hard. Third down and seven, the snap to Kevin. He's pressured, steps past the tackler. He's at the 50. He throws to the far side, and Mark Zaus on the sideline makes the catch for the first down. Great body control by Mark Zaus. He had his tiptoes on the hash on the far sideline at the 21. Yeah, Mark Chouse that time was able to to uh, kind of play that sideline. Uh, and now you're going to see a, another kicker, uh, Houston Ray, is going to come out and try to make, make another kick. This will be a 37-yard attempt by Ray, who had missed from 25 earlier. The snap and the hold by Chouse. The kick is up. Distance is good. And that kick is good. Houston Ray at the gun adds three points to a 43 to nothing lead as Henderson State goes into the locker room after a very impressive first half of football. RJ, the Reddies have held Northwestern Oklahoma to 23 yards. That is it. Let's head down to Hunter Lively with a ready sideline report along with Scott Maxfield. Coach, the defense has held them under 25 yards. So far. Yeah, we we're coming at them a little bit. We thought we could uh, play some man coverage and come after them a little bit. And uh, so far, we, they haven't been able to uh, throw the ball real well. So we're going to continue to bring the pressure on them a little bit, make that quarterback uncomfortable. Joseph snapped three big touchdown catches in the first half. you got to be pleased with him as well. Uh, Joseph's had a good year. He's uh, executed pretty good. I thought we came out a little slow offensively. Uh, didn't execute real well. We kind of spit and sputter a little bit. But it looks like we might have found a little rhythm here at the end. Yeah, you can hear from... 
Coach Maxfield there. The, certainly the start to the football game, RJ, was a little bit surprising. The Reddies didn't have a good time until their third possession, and from that third possession on, I mean, the, the brakes were off. Yeah, no, you're right. They, they, uh, the Reddies weren't holding back. And like I said, we called it Kevin Rogers, Darius, all those guys for the rest of the day. Well, we've got the Zeiser Wealth Management halftime statistics coming after the break and also sitting down with legendary ready Bobby Jones here on the Ready Radio Network. The score after first half, it's Henderson State 43, Northwest and Oklahoma nothing. We're talking to Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia. This is Henderson State football on the Ready Radio Network. Hi folks, Glenn Hill here with Century 21, and it's a great day for some football, and we've got a great football team to watch. We're lucky to have such a wonderful county with such awesome teams. Makes for a great place to live. Just ask anybody. We support our teams, and our Century 21 team wants to support you. The Century 21 was ranked number one in the top four categories of customer satisfaction by J.D. Powers. Hey, that's pretty nice. We want to be on your team. Call Century 21. Find your freedom with your new home with Jason Eddington of United Country Hometown Realtors. Nobody has more information available for your search to find that perfect home. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com. Take a virtual tour through all of the gorgeous properties. Check out the exclusive aerial views of the property. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com and pick out your perfect home. Then call Jason Eddington at 870-210-1445. Let Jason work with you to guide you through the maze of finding that home with the most modern and unique ways possible. Call Jason Eddington at 870-210-1445. Life is good in Arkansas. Delphia. Do you have an idea that you'd like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts for you to choose from. We also have personalized service which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street or call 246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. You're born amazing and at Baptist Health we want to keep you that way. In fact, that's our mission. To not only provide the most skilled doctors and nurses to heal you from sickness or injury, and comprehensive care to support your recovery, but also to be your guide to health. Also, you can keep on inspiring, keep on reaching, and keep on amazing. See some of Baptist Health's amazing stories at keeponamazing.com. This is Darius Davis, and you're listening to the two-time defender Great American Conference Champions on the Henderson State Radio Network. Back here from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia on a glorious Saturday for football in Arkansas. Phil Nelson along with R.J. Hawk on our lively. The Reddies leading 43 to nothing over Northwestern Oklahoma State. And we bring on recent... Hall of Honor inductee Bobby Jones. Well, Bobby, first of all, congratulations on the induction today. You can see it on your credential here. It says Hall of Honor, and well, I guess the only thing I would say is I'm a little surprised this happened. How does it feel today? Well, I feel like I'm receiving this afternoon. I didn't receive this all on my athletic track. Since I've been here, I've been here 25 years, and I've been very, very fortunate to been able to serve this institution as, as an interim president, as interim AD, and some other things. So, again, all of the better I was back in that place. I was to the Bill, we talked about the prior to getting coming on the air. When you think of like a utility player in baseball, that's what you are. I mean, you've been the president of the university. You've been the athletic, athletic director of the university. I know these are interim bases, but uh, but you've pretty much handled every position. And you're a football player here at this university. Well, I've been lucky. You know, it's uh, being in the right place at the right time sometimes is uh, the key to success. But i uh, been fortunate to be surrounded by some good people and uh, the great atmosphere to work here at Henderson. And, you know, you know I, I told the uh, group today at the Hall of uh, Honor induction, one of the last things that uh, I've been asked many, many times was, could the teams that I played on back in 67 through 70 compete with these teams that are playing today for Henderson? And, you know, I gave them a little thought. And I said, you know what? Your dad gum right we could have. So 
<laughs> you know, I'm gonna. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Yeah. The last time we had you on a broadcast, Bobby, you were still interim athletic director. So, uh, since the installment of Sean Jones as the AD, and Sean's done a terrific job, uh, I hope that's taken a little bit off of your plate as the CFO. Obviously, you're a busy man, but you don't have to do two jobs any longer. Well, you know what? Sean Jones is a breath of fresh air. Sean has done so much in the short period of time he's been here. Uh, it's just tremendous. He's a professional. He knows exactly what to do, what not to do, and he's a pleasure working with uh, from a CFO standpoint. Uh, you know, I support athletics, but uh, sometimes you have to say no, and Sean understands that. And uh, But we've got some great plans for the future for uh, this stadium and, uh, and what we're doing with the building of our student housing and uh, the growth of this institution. Uh, you know, President Jones, Dr. Jones, is a great uh, great leader he's got some great plans a strategic plan which we're going to fold out to the to the public here this next week or so and uh, with the goals he set for us uh, it's kind of like it's on a shirt our, our shirt it's a full speed ahead and that's what he expects out of us and that's what we're doing you know coming into Arkadelphia on highway 7 the, the drive looks a little bit different than it did even last year of course across the street the new stadium for Washington and on this side of the highway brand new student housing which you referred to and uh, tell us about what's going up over here uh, which is over by the softball complex and when they expect it to be ready well we're actually uh, for the fall of 2015 our students will be living in that uh, facility that's a five building facility three stories high uh, it will have a swimming pool and a uh, club room it's going to be for upperclassmen uh, it's going to be very nice on the inside it's uh, uh, you know, granite uh, countertops, if you will, a lot of stainless steel. I want to uh, move there. This yeah, sounds absolutely. like a place to be. Do, do you have a broadcaster's apartment over yeah. there for us? Well, I, that's what I was talking to you. I said, I think we need to get us an apartment to sell our house yeah. here and move in down there. <laughs> but the students spoke. They wanted student housing, and we listened. And that's what we're trying to do for this institution is listen to our students, give them what they feel is necessary to make them successful in their four or five years here at Henderson State University. They go out and get a degree and then uh, hopefully come back and uh, help us do some other things we want. Bobby, uh, let me ask you this. And by, by the way, Bobby Jones, uh, Hall of Honor inductee, joining us here on the broadcast as the Reddies lead 43 to nothing at halftime. Uh, you know, from the time you played and from then until now, you've seen everything pretty much that's going on with the athletic department. What's the biggest thing you've seen as far as change, not only with the football, just athletics overall, uh, from the time you were here to, to now? Well, you know, when I was here and I started in 67 as a freshman, we played on the old Haygood Stadium across the street where a Newberry dorm sits today in the Kaplinger Air Science Building. We actually built this stadium. I've actually spread uh, fertilizer on the grass field here when I was a freshman uh, and played the last three years here. Uh, but the change in athletics over the years, and, and, you know, a while ago I said something about being able to play with these kids that are uh, out there today. Everyone today is so much stronger, so much faster, and, and, and they're, they're just better athletes, if you will, from a physical standpoint. Uh, yeah, we could have played one game maybe with them, but not, not game after game. Uh, we didn't have the, the facilities, weight room, if you will, uh, the things that are available to these students today to ensure that they're athletically uh, strong and, and be a success. We had some great players back in the day, but uh, all of these kids, I, I think what we're seeing is we not only have athletes, but they're student athletes. These young men and women go to class. They're, they're setting the standard. Sean has set a, 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 the bar high, a three-point for all of his athletes. And uh, not only are they they're performing on the field, they're performing in the classroom. And, uh, you know, I think that's the biggest change. I think the, the, the quality of the athlete and, and whatnot. So. All right. Well, uh, Bobby, we will uh, leave it there. And I know it's... Uh it's a special day for you and uh, the family. Uh, almost any game at Carpenter Haygood will be, but this day kind of stands above most of right. them as you go into the Hall of Honor. We thank you for stopping by. It's always good to see you. Well, thank you. We appreciate y'all. What you do, RJ and Phil. Thank Thanks so much. Thank you. Bobby Jones right now, the Director of Finance here at uh, Henderson State University, joining us on the Zeiser Wealth Management Halftime Show. We'll take a break. When we come back, RJ's got all the stats to tell you about as Henderson leads Northwestern Oklahoma. Ready Radio Network. Do you have an idea that you would like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts from you to choose from. We also have personalized service which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street or call 246-3803. 
Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. At Domino's, we're more than just pizza, so mix it up with our chicken, stuffed cheesy bread, sandwiches, pastas, or medium two-topping pizzas for $5.99 each, and we'll mix stand-up comedy with a robot. Stuffed cheesy bread and my act have a lot in common. They're both super cheesy. Tough crowd. Order any two or more of Domino's eight-piece chicken, stuffed cheesy bread, oven-baked sandwiches, pastas in a dish, or medium two-topping pizzas for just $5.99 each. Two-item minimum. Handmade pan pizza may be extra. You must ask for this limited-time offer. Prices, participation, delivery area, and charges may vary. I was ready for college. To be out on my own. Meet people who aren't just like my high school friends. To study what I wanted to study at a university I could afford. I was ready for Henderson State University. Are you... Take a virtual tour and apply online at GetReady.com. That's G-E-T-R-E-D-D-I-E.com. Or you can call 1-800-228-7333 for information about Henderson State University. Brookshire's proudly supports the Henderson State Reddies football team as they take the field this fall and look to repeat as the Great American Conference champions. Go deep and save with our wide variety of produce and fresh cut meats that are perfect for grilling. Don't break the bank. Break tackles this football season and save money at Brookshire's. Brookshire's has been bringing fresh feed to the table since 1928 and we're proud to be your hometown grocer. Don't get called for delay of game. Find all of your pregame needs at Brookshire's today. Share meals, share life with Brookshire's and go Reddies. Ready fans, this is Dustin Hall, and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. Welcome back to Parker Haygood Stadium as we have about eight minutes left in halftime. And uh, Henderson State leads 43 to nothing over Northwestern Oklahoma. It's now time for Zyzer Wealth Halftime Stats. And remember, at Zyzer Wealth Management, they uh, never process or over-process the value of, of emotion. Just let them show you the difference. Visit the... Zizer Wealth on the web at ZizerWealth.com. Well, in the first half, it was all Henderson State as they lead this game 43 to nothing. Henderson State had 15 first downs compared to Northwest Oklahoma's one first down in the first half. Uh, on the ground, the Reddies ran the ball 19 times for 92 yards. Northwest Oklahoma ran it 16 times for 10 yards. In the passing department, Henderson State threw the ball for 260 yards. Northwest Oklahoma threw it for 13 and total offense in the game, Henderson State ran 48 plays for 352 yards, while Northwest Oklahoma ran 26 plays for 23 yards. Penalties in the game, Northwest Oklahoma had 4 for 47, while the Reddies had 4 for 32. And time of possession, uh, Northwest Oklahoma had it for 14 minutes and 5 seconds, while the Reddies had it for 15 minutes and 55 seconds. On third downs, Northwest Oklahoma went 0 of 6, while the Reddies were 5 of 10, and the Reddies were 1 of 1 on fourth down. Individual uh, stats here in the first half. Avery Morris ran the ball two times for four yards, while Jerrion Tutman had four carries for four yards in the first half for the Rangers. Henderson State, Rodney Bryson ran the ball nine times for 61 yards and a touchdown. Jaquan Cole carried three times for 24 yards, and Ryan McDonald ran it five times for 17 yards. In the passing department, Kevin Rogers is 22 of 29 for 260 yards and four touchdowns. Uh, while Ty Hooper is 3 of 10 for 13 yards and an interception. Receiving Darius Davis, 6 receptions for 86 yards and a touchdown. Uh, he's now 5 yards away from being the all-time leading receiver in the state of Arkansas. That would pass Jarius Wright from the University of Arkansas. Joseph Snap caught 6 balls for 41 yards. He had 3 touchdowns in the first half. While Deshaun Gordon for the Rangers had 2 receptions for 7 yards. Punting, Christian Latouf had 2 punts. For 87 yards, it was an average of 43 and a half, while Will Hawkins had seven punts for 258 yards. It was an average of 36.9. Leading tackler for the Rangers was Alex Hemberger with seven total tackles. Josh Davis had four.
I don't just wear the shirt. I love it. Give. Advocate. Volunteer. Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. Hey, Ray fans. This is Glenn and Bobo. Welcome to Innocent State Radio Network. Back inside Carpenter Haygood Stadium with about 440 to play, uh, for, uh, 440 until the start of the second half. Bill Nelson here along with R.J. Hawk and Hunter Lively down on the sideline. The Reddies 43 and the Rangers nothing. Let's take a look around the Great American Conference and see what is going on today. We do have one other final score from across the street at Cliff Harris Stadium, Washita Baptist improves their record to 4-0, and blowing out southwestern Oklahoma State by a final of 54 to nothing. Not much of a contest at Cliff Harris Stadium. Southwestern, whose next week's Reddy's opponent drops to 2-3. and three. Washita will go into next week, in which the Tigers are at northwestern Oklahoma State and Alva with a 4-0 and record. One of the game in action in the fourth quarter in Durant, Oklahoma, southeastern Oklahoma, 50 Bacone at 7. That's an out-of-conference game and, of course, will, now count, will not count as far as the conference standings go. Other games that haven't kicked off later on tonight. It is a 6 p.m. tilt in Searcy as the Harding Bison put their 3-0 record on the line against Southern Arkansas. The Mule Riders, who blew out Northwestern last week, come in 2-2. Two two. Arkansas Tech at home against Arkansas Monticello. Tech will bring a 2-2 two and two record, 2-1 two and one of the conference. UAM is 1-3 and three in a 7 p.m. tilt in uh, Southern Nazarene, Bethany, Oklahoma, as uh, Southern Nazarene puts on a game against East Central. Southern Nazarene 0-4 this season, and ECU, after taking the loss against the Reddies last week in Ada, has a 2-2 two and two record. We've got to take a break with three minutes until the start of the second half. It's the Reddies 43 and the Rangers nothing. You're listening to Henderson State Football on the Reddy Radio Network. Stop in and check out the great savings at your neighborhood Sears hometown store located at 2919 Pine Street in Arkadelphia. You can count on us for all your appliance, tool, electronic, and lawn and garden needs. At Sears hometown stores, you can find the top 10 appliance brands like LG, Samsung, Amana, Bosch, KitchenAid, Whirlpool, GE, Maytag, Frigidaire, and Kenmore at the lowest price guaranteed. If you find a lower price, Sears hometown stores will match that price plus give you an extra 10% of the difference. Sears hometown stores offer delivery setup and installation. We also have financing offers through Sears Card and a layaway program. Application is in store and approval is immediate. Shop local at your Sears hometown store located at 2919 Pine Street in Arkadelphia. Sears of Arkadelphia, proud sponsor of Henderson State University. Go Reddies. And remember, don't buy your TV where you buy your underwear. This is Kevin Rogers and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. Back at Carpenter Haygood Stadium as uh, the Reddies have arrived on the field to start their second half warm-ups. We uh, still await the arrival of Northwestern right now, RJ. And if you're the Northwestern Oklahoma Rangers, uh, you're watching Dallas Hardison take some, uh, some uh, actually that's Blake Reeve taking some uh, practice throws down on the sideline along with Dallas Hardison. I do see Dallas now throwing. So Kevin Rogers is also throwing, RJ. So maybe we see uh, the uh, usual ready starting quarterback come out there. But with the other two quarterbacks also warming up their arms, we may see a three-headed monster of quarterbacks. Is, is it a quarterback competition going on down there? Yeah, whoever, right. whoever can throw the best the best ball on the sideline, they get to come into the game. Uh, no, I'm all kidding aside. And look, hey, I, I, and I know that we've had opposing teams listen to our broadcast in the past, and uh, I, I, I'm not trying. I'm not poking fun. I, I'm not doing anything. Um, it, it's just it's impressive by the Reddies to see what they've done so far. And uh, I mean, facts are facts. So when you look at it through the last six quarters of play against Northwestern Oklahoma, the Reddies have. At, They've outscored uh, the Rangers 85 to nothing. I mean, so it, it is what it is. And um, now you just you get. You lesser opponent here. This is a GAC member and Northwestern really looking under the ready. Well, you do it, you had told me what the, the total score in a game and a half between these two schools since last year. What is it overall? 
uh, between the two schools in six quarters of play, 85 to nothing. And, and 42 to nothing was the final score last year. 43 to nothing is the score at halftime yeah. today. And the Rangers just barely making it to the field before the kickoff for the second half. We still see many of the Northwestern players in those white uniforms and red pants just now making it out of the locker room. So they're a late arriving team for the start of the second half. The Reddy's been out here for the last five to six minutes in mass. Well, they've been out here getting stretched and warmed up, and they're ready right now. Yeah, that, I mean, you look at this, Phil, and and uh, after the drubbing you take in the first half, you almost don't want to come back out on the field, do you? Let's see what Hunter's got to say. Hunter on the uh, sideline. Uh, Hunter, right out I, I don't remember seeing an opponent arrive this late for uh, the start of the second half. Yeah, I know, guys. It, it's They're a little late to the field, but hey, I mean, whatever floats your boat, right? Hey, hey, Hunter, would you please quit over the, chatting it up with Chouse over there and and find some research to do? I mean, my goodness. Hey, I got you something. Okay. Uh, I think one of the biggest differences for uh, for this year compared to last year is we don't have 25-mile-an-hour winds smacking us in the face. Well, good I point. think that's definitely been to Kevin Rogers' advantage. He doesn't have to worry about his passes going seven yards the other way. Hey, by the way, I, but at there at halftime, I saw Hunter. Uh, he was up here in the press box on his phone like Adam Schefter trying to get with Rob Redding trying to figure out what was if there was anybody injured or out for the second half. And it, 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 was there any extra report on Kendrick Burns? We didn't know if we'd see Burns in the second half. Is he suited up? Uh, I do not see him right now, guys, but it wouldn't surprise me if he didn't didn't partake in activities for the second half just for precautionary reasons. I uh, see Kendrick right now. He's uh, near the, uh, the the 50-yard line. He's standing right next to Mike Metter, who's also uh, one of the ready uh, defenders. And uh, Kendrick looks like he might have his helmet in his hands. I can't quite tell. But he won't be on the return here by Henderson State. The Reddies will be kicking it off to begin the second half. And uh, the Rangers have uh, finally uh, made it to their sidelines. So we're ready for second half action. I, I just don't think I've ever seen a team have 23 yards of total offense in one half. Yeah, and, and be, be out. I mean, 43 points given up by their defense, 23 yards by their offense. That's, that's uh, utter domination right there. Christian Latouf continues to do the kicking on the uh, on kickoffs for the Reddies. Left-footed kicker with a low spiraling kick brought out from the six-yard line right between the hashes. Juke move at the 19-yard line. That's Justin Lord who's now shoved backwards. Lost the football. Reddies pick it up. No signal by the officials. They threw the beanbag down and the Reddies had the football. I still see no no signal by the official and the ready defense is coming out. Well, they, they basically ended his forward motion back. The the head official didn't see the or hear the whistle blown and they marked the forward progress back at, at around the 6 17 yard line. So he threw the beanbag, but uh, it didn't mean anything. Just a little game of cornhole, I guess. Yeah, that's all it was. Ty Hooper is still in at quarterback for Northwestern. Hooper had a miserable first half, 3 of 10 for 13 yards. Looked like the Reddies were offside as Hooper completes a short pass to the far side. Gain of a couple of yards to Justin Schanbacher. It looked like there was a Reddy offside from the right line, right side of the line. Yeah. Offsides, number 27 of the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. And that's Blake Lopez who had pinched in from his spot at right linebacker and had that uh, right foot over the line. He's trying to get uh, trying to get in there just a bit too early and was able to cross into the neutral zone. I believe that's the first defensive penalty on the Reddies. First and five for the Rangers. Justin Lord in at running back. Hooper will change the plays. He looks to the sideline for a new play call from Allen Hall. They've had some trouble getting the play clock. It's down at four. Hooper with a man in motion. Gets the playoff just in time. Back to throw. He's pressured. He's flushed out to his right. He's going to run for it. Past the 20, 25, and out of bounds near the first down. You realize that is only the second first down for Northwestern Oklahoma today? And it comes up short. He's going to be short by a yard. This will be second down and about one. See, I thought he, thought he stepped right past the line, but so they still only have one first down. Needed the 28. He got the, he needed the 27. He got the 26. Second down and one. 
Hooper literally just tried to pick up Lord and move him to his uh, left shoulder. Comes up near his center, calls out the play, gets a look at the ready defense, and Henderson is going to change their look. They had nearly six down linemen. Now they go with a 3 4, and the handoff to Lord breaks free from a couple of tacklers. First down pass to 30. He is down to the, he is up to the 33 yard line, so he gains seven yards. That's, I believe, the, the longest run for the Rangers today, and it is a Northwestern Oklahoma State first down. Justin Lord, five foot eight, 181 pounds, a junior from Augusta, Georgia. A couple of carries for eight yards today. You realize that uh, through this ball game, Northwestern Oklahoma has not even made it past the 50 yard line. Right, you kind of wonder if that'll happen. Reddies keep most of their defense. Back to Hooper, he throws. It is tipped away by Chris King and incomplete. King running free along with Dijon Benton from the far side pressuring Hooper. He had his hands right in his face when he throws it and King gets a finger on the football. Second down and 10. It's all that'll bring up second down and, and when you look at this defense, they're still bringing pressure, Phil. I mean, from all sides, they, they're not they're not just playing back in coverage. They're, they're sending two and three guys at a time. King lined up to the left against a single wide receiver. Hooper takes the snap. He's back to throw. Quick pass is incomplete. Thrown behind his intended receiver. Running a crossing pattern about five yards out. That was Alex De La Cruz, the intended receiver. And it was a few yards behind him. Third down and ten for the Rangers. I wonder if that's any type of record. If that's the team has never made it past the 50 yard line in one game. I we'll assume it's happened sooner or later. Hasn't happened to the to ready opponents yet. And so far we haven't seen the Rangers pass the 50. Third down and 10. Hooper takes the snap. He'll throw deep to the far side. And the pass is caught at the 35. And they're going to take it all the way into the end zone to Sean Gordon with the long touchdown and a fabulous throw by Ty Hooper. Gordon with separation against single coverage made the catch inside the 30 and there might have been a finger on his heel when he steps out of the tackle at the 25. Long touchdown for the Rangers and they're on the scoreboard. They're not only past the 50 yards, Jay, they're on the scoreboard now. Oh, spoke too soon. 66 yard pass play. That's the longest play against the Rennies this year. Yeah. Will Hawkins about to add the point after. Snap is down, kick is up. And Hawkins adds the point after his ninth of the season. Northwestern answers on their first drive of the second half as we step aside for a break. 12.47 remaining in the third quarter from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia. The Henderson State Reddies lead Northwestern Oklahoma 43-7. This is Henderson State football on the Ready Radio Network. Ready for another season of hard-hitting game day parties? Hunger is ready, ready to strike without mercy. Whether you join the party at a tailgate or in your own living room, Subway Catering's lineup includes giant subs, sandwich platters, cookie platters, chips and drinks, everything you need to crush hunger and score a touchdown for football fans everywhere. So get in there. Subway, eat fresh. Catering orders must be placed 24 hours in advance. See participating store for details. In the winter of 1961, a piano player at the Black Orchid convinced his up-and-coming singer to try out a new song that he thought would be perfect for him. So Tony Bennett performed I Left My Heart in San Francisco for the first time in Hot Springs. In 2003, Bennett encored the trademark song in the Spa City, where he performed to a packed house at the dedication of the new Summit Arena. Catch a rising star during your next visit to Hot Springs, because the Spa City is Entertainment City. This is Coach Scott Maxfield, and you are listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. Welcome back to Carpenter Hankins Stadium, and for the Reddies, or excuse me, for Northwestern Oklahoma, five plays, 83 yards in two minutes and 13 seconds, and that's their first score of the game as they lead 43 to seven. And make sure you follow the Reddies on Twitter at Ready Athletics. They've got all kinds of news updates. Uh, and game times for all their sports, and all you have to do is follow them on Twitter at Ready Athletics. 66 yard pass play on single coverage against Chris King to Sean Gordon with his third touchdown of the season. The fifth touchdown pass by Ty Hooper, and the first points of the game 
for Northwestern Oklahoma State. 43 to 7 is the ready lead as Henderson State about to get the football for the first time since halftime. And a short kickoff is brought from the 20 by Darius Davis and he's tackled immediately at the 24 yard line. Great coverage on special teams by Tanner McGee. Yeah, brings him down after a four yard return. That was just a a man-on-man -man tackle. It was textbook by McGee, and it's first down for Henderson State. As let's see who comes out to run the offense. Kevin Rogers will come out for the first drive. Well, Northwestern Oklahoma scored, so that day, I mean it's a different ball game now. You got you got to make sure your your number ones are back out there. Rogers forty yards short of his third consecutive three hundred yard game. And a pass to the flats to Jaquan Cole on first down. Stutter step move of the 22. He loses yardage on the play. Loss of a yard or two. Two-yard loss on first down. Henderson State looking at second down and 12. Boy, when Cole made that catch, he saw three defenders in his face. That stutter step move didn't buy him any room. Rodgers puts Cole in motion to the right side. Kevin takes the snap over the middle short to Davis. Flag thrown as Davis has passed the 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 up the left sideline out of bounds near the uh, Northwestern 45. But a flag thrown way back at the Henderson 20. That's in the vicinity of where holding is usually called. Henderson State five penalties for 37 yards. Personal foul, 73 on the defense. Looked like hands to the face. That's what it looked like. Eric Thigpen yeah. is called for the penalty by the officiating crew, and it's the first personal foul called on the Rangers today. There's the Reddies up 15 yards to the 50. You know one thing, Phil, we always talk about the Reddies and how much they score. Well, at least they didn't do what Texas A&M Commerce did earlier in the year, and they scored 98 against East Texas Baptist. It was 98 to 20. Henderson State declined the penalty. They took the long pass play to Davis for 29. Now a pass to Chappelle in the flats. Breaks past the man of the 45. Steps out of bounds near the 41. Seven-yard pass play to Chappelle. And Corey's first catch of the afternoon. The Reddies have second down and three at the Ranger 41. By the way, that last catch for Davis now makes him the... Uh, uh, Arkansas collegiate receiver of all time in the state of Arkansas. As far as yardage goes, Rogers throws a tunnel screen to Chappelle, dragged out after the initial catch, brought him down right to the 40. Linesman marks him down to the 41, so looks like no gain on that play for Chappelle, and Henderson looking at third down and three. Here's Darius now with over nearly 2,900 career reception yards at Henderson State, 115 yards today on seven catches, including a 53-yard pass play near the end of the first half. Chappelle's in motion, lines up to Darius' his right, the snap back to Rodgers, throwing deep, looking for Davis, pass underthrown and intercepted by the Rangers of the 23, and there's room to run for Jordan Norris. Norris zigzags his way to the 25-yard line and is dropped there on a short return but Kevin Rogers with his first interception of the day and Northwestern looking to build a little momentum now the Rangers drive for a touchdown on the first on the first drive after halftime and then they intercept Rogers to get the ball back yeah that was that ball was well underthrown and um, you know sometimes you start to see stuff like this and you when your your ones are in the game and I'm not gonna say Kevin did this but uh, you, you start to take chances a little bit more than what you would if this was a 14-point a game, and uh, that ball probably should not have been thrown right there. He just did not get a lot on it. Ball was badly underthrown. Third interception on Rodgers this year, and the first today. Now Ty Hooper with a pump fake, dropping back, throwing deep to nobody. Closest man to the football was a ready defender, Zach Richardson, about five feet away, and it actually looked like Richardson was running a pass route of his own. Second down and 10. Well, it looks like the Rangers want to open things up, RJ. 66-yard pass play for a touchdown on the last drive, and they throw deep on the first play of this drive. And if you're going to get back into the football game at all, or at least make it Someone respectful, can, yeah. you're going to need to go deep. Reddy's dropped Richardson back into coverage. Short pass to the far side is caught. 
It's Alex De La Cruz on the right sideline, out of bounds after a gain of a few yards. Looks like he got a couple of yards on this. It'll be third down and eight from the 29. Yeah, I would imagine you're going to see this this team be more of a passing team, just as far as trying to throw it around as much as possible. You saw there in the first half that Northwestern Oklahoma, they really relied on the run. That got them nowhere. Now you got to try something different. Hooper has Avery Morris behind him on third down and eight. On third and long, they've been running the football. They may be passing it here. Wide receivers put in motion in front of the quarterback. Hooper back to throw. Hooper sets up, throws deep over the middle in a double coverage, and it is incomplete on the far side. Chris King and Cameron Devereaux on the coverage for the Reddies. The intended receiver against the double coverage was Tamarick Courtney. Courtney at six foot one leaps in the air, got his hands on the ball, but better coverage by King, and in an incomplete pass. Fourth down and eight, and it'll be yet another punt for a busy Will Hawkins. Hawkins already has punted seven times for an average of 37 yards. Reddy's with two return men back of the 40 on the other side of the field. Joseph Snap and Darius Davis. With a 43-7 lead, the Reddies will get the football back. The snap is fumbled, and he was able to get off a very short kick. It bounces and returned from the Rangers' 35-yard line up past the 25-20 and dragged down near the 16-yard line on a very odd play is Allen Tatum. Tatum, as a linebacker in this spot, he was just hoping to block for somebody, and then the fumbled snap by Hawkins. Hawkins picked up that ground ball. And he got off would appear to be a two-bounce punt. Yeah, and, and I think it bounced behind the line of scrimmage initially and then goes right to Tatum, who was it was a heads-up play by Tatum to catch that bounce and then return it for a few yards. Yeah, no, you're right. And, uh, I mean, that, that was a heck of a job right there. And kind of a weird play altogether, actually. Officially a nine-yard punt returned 21 yards by Tatum. Henderson... Already inside the State Farm Red Zone, st sponsored by David Bost Insurance. They're at the 17. Dallas Hardison is in. Fakes the handoff. Throws a completed pass to Dustin Holland, who's tackled after the making the catch at the 16-yard line. That's a gain of a couple of yards to Dustin Holland. And uh, Dallas Hardison taking over as the quarterback for Henderson State. Hardison's been impressive when he sees the field. Five foot ten, hundred ninety-five pounds. He's from Bentonville, a sophomore. He's thrown fifteen times, nine completions for one hundred sixty-seven yards, and he rolls out, throws a great pass, dropped at the seven by Holland. Holland leaps in the air again. Ball was right in his hands, and it popped out. Yeah, uh, that was a, that was a tough catch because he was having to come towards the near side, and he had a man right on his back, and that's a tough catch to make. Hardison on third down and nine. This puts a man in motion. He throws over the middle. It is incomplete. He was looking for Jackson inside the five-yard line, throwing a couple of yards behind him. Covered, provided by Buster Horn. Fourth down and nine. This would be about a 31, 32-yard field goal attempt. Houston Ray will give it another try. Ray this afternoon, good on two of three attempts, including a 39-yard field goal. This is on the left hash held by Mark Chaus. The kick from 33 yards is up and no good. He pulled it wide to the left. Second miss for Houston Ray. And that'll keep it 43-7 to seven with 9.16 to play here in the third quarter. Second miss for Ray had missed only once in the first four weeks. From Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, Arkansas, with 9.16 to play in the third quarter. Our score, Henderson State 43, Northwestern Oklahoma 7. This is Henderson State Football on the Ready Radio Network. Do you have an idea that you would like to see on a t-shirt? Print Mania can help you turn your idea into a reality. Print Mania offers a variety of t-shirts from you to choose from. We also have personalized service, which will allow you to work with an artist who will help you create your t-shirt. Print Mania also does embroidery and engraving. Check out our new location at 624 Main Street or call 246-3803. Print Mania, proud supporters of Henderson State University. Arkadelphia Super Smiles offers general dentistry for kids and young adults. Dr. Trevor Coffey and his staff look forward in treating your child and making sure they always have a super smile. 
Arkadelphia Super Smiles is located at 280 Professional Park Drive, Suite B in Arkadelphia. For an appointment, call 870-246-2828. And like always, our kids is accepted at Arkadelphia Super Smiles. Hey, Ready fans, this is Dijon Benton, and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. With Houston Ray missing the 32-yard field goal attempt, Northwestern Oklahoma gets the football at the 20-yard line, trailing the Reddies 43-7. to They've taken more chances here in the second half, and Ty Hooper fakes a pass, rolls to his right, throws it over to the right side, and the pass is caught at the 25-yard line for a gain of about five yards. Tamara Courtney on the reception for the Rangers. And now the Rangers with over 100 yards of total offense today. Hooper near 90 yards passing, 6 of 17. He has a touchdown and an interception. Second and five from the 25 with a clock in motion inside nine minutes. Hooper takes the snap and hands it off. Running over right tackle is Malcolm Robinson for short yardage on second down. He's up to the 30, pardon me, the 28. Gain of three yards, bring up third down and short. And, uh, you know, we haven't seen a lot of third and short for the Rangers today, RJ. It's been yeah. third and long mostly. Not a lot today, actually. Rangers are one for eight on third down. Robinson stays in as the running back. Reddies are going to bring an extra man on a blitz. They've been blitzing quite often on third down. It's been third and long, and this is a little bit different. Coverage will be a little tighter here. Hooper takes the snap. Quick pass to the far side. Caught for the first down. And shoved out of bounds after making the first down catch is Tamara Courtney. Courtney making his second catch of this drive. Northwestern Oklahoma State past the 30-yard line up to the 32. First and 10. Tell you what, when, when Hooper throws with some confidence he's got a pretty good arm he seems pretty confident right now much more than what he was there in the first half that's for sure puts robinson over his left shoulder and gives to robinson robinson up the gut short yardage on first down only made it to the 35 gain of two yards will make it second down and eight i still can't still not gonna be able to run that football though i mean that ready defense is doing a heck of a job Malcolm Robinson getting the bulk of the carries. He is a former Tiger from Central in Little Rock. Second down and eight. Robinson again over left shoulder of Hooper. Takes the snap. He's going to throw. Looking to the near side. He throws a deep pass on single coverage. And this will be incomplete. But flags are thrown. And we will see a penalty for interference on the Henderson secondary. That's Justin Walter, and, and he's a redshirt freshman out of Crosby, Texas. He just got burned, and that was probably the best case scenario is to interfere with the receiver and live to, live to play another day. He was guarding the same receiver. Number 14, that, 15 yards from previous spot, automatic first down. He was running with Deshaun Gordon, who had caught the 66-yard touchdown previously in this third quarter, so you can see the Rangers are... Looking to go to, it is Gordon, who's their leading receiver on the season and leading receiver today for the Rangers. Three catches, 73 yards. The penalty brings them up to the 50. First down Rangers right at midfield, trailing Henderson 43-7. to 6.50 on a stop clock here in the third quarter. Tight end in motion, lines up on the right. Hooper throws out into the flats. Catch made by... Tavarek Courtney, he's up the right sideline. He has the first down. He's inside Henderson territory to the 35-yard line. Gained 15 yards on first down. Gary Vines on the stop, pushing him out of bounds. Boy, and you're starting to see this offense move a little bit against, a little bit against Henderson State. Well, Tamar Courtney looks like a, an interesting prospect. A freshman who is out of Lubbock. Six foot one, 180. Good-looking body, good speed. Three receivers lined up to the right of Hooper, who keeps a single man of the backfield, and a wide receiver to his left. That's Gordon. Gordon obviously very dangerous. Snap back to Hooper. Pump fake. Drops back. Throws deep. Right sideline. The pass is in the air. It is intercepted by Henderson inside the five. 
A great job right there, I believe, for Henderson. That was Christian Love who came up with the interception. <laughs> the thing about Henderson, you love intercepting the football, but now you got to take it from the one-yard line. First interception for Christian Love this season. The second time that the Reddies intercept Ty Hooper today. Henderson State gets the ball back, leading 43-7, to 6-10 to play in the third quarter. Phil Elson here along with R.J. Hawk. Hunter Lively is down on the sideline. And now Henderson will put Dallas Hardison in his own end zone. Let's see if Dallas can lead a lengthy scoring drive. This is about as long as you can go. They're back at their own one. Hardison with Varick Ponder in the backfield. Gives to Ponder. Over right tackle. First down past the 10. Up to the 15. Brought down at the 18-yard line is Varick Ponder. A gain of 17 yards on first down. And uh, Ponder, yet another impressive running back. He hasn't quite gotten the headlines of Jaquan Cole, Ryan McDonald, and Robbie Bryson. But Ponder also looks like a pretty shifty running back. First and 10 from the 17. Second carry for Ponder up the middle. Maybe a yard, if that, stacked up at the line of scrimmage, and the lines would give him no gain. Well, you know, we got to see Ponder against Nichols State, and, and uh, he had a touchdown that ball game. Saw him in the very first game of the year against Southern Nazarene. Got, got, we we got uh, separated a couple times, and we'll get to the legal ID here just momentarily. Just gonna get a, a break in the action. Snap back, and there's Hardison again to ponder, making men miss, makes it over the 20 and up to the 24. As we stop for 10 seconds for station identification, you're listening to the Ready Sports Network, KYXK FM, ESPN 106.9 in Gurdon, Arkadelphia, and KARN AM 920, the sports animal in Little Rock. Flags are thrown as Dallas Hardison throws an incomplete pass to the far side. Harris moving on both lines there, RJ, on third down and five. I, I think they're going to call illegal motion on the Reddies. All sides, defense, number nine. Oh, wow. Five-yard penalty, repeat the down. I said the illegal motion because the line judge on the far side, he had the illegal motion First down. signal set up. Uh, he was kind of giving that to the head judge, but apparently... Apparently that wasn't the case. He must have been having chest problems. Joby St. Fleur, the defensive end, called for the penalty. Henderson State with the football first down from their own 28-yard line. Hardison with a quick pass in the inside, and it is caught near the first down marker by A.J. Smith. You can't miss Smith on that field. Six foot five, 215. Gain of 10 yards to Smith for a ready first down. Yeah, he's a big kid, man, out of Little Rock Central. And, uh, you know, you, you like you said, you can't miss him on the field. He's a big possession receiver. And off to Ponder over right tackle. Cuts inside the 40-yard line, spinning to the 45, lunges for the 46. Marked him down to the 45-yard line. Gain of six to Varick Ponder. It'll be second down and four for the Reddies from their 45. Ponder now with four carries for 28 yards. The Reddies have had six different players run the football today. They've gained 118 yards on the ground, 308 in the air. Hardison back to pass on second and four. Short pass caught by Smith at the 45, nothing there. Back to the initial line of scrimmage. They give him a yard. He stretched forward to the 46, a one-yard gain to Smith. Third down and three for Henderson State. Checking the game, Jaquan Cole for the Reddies. Ponder came out. He had to get a breather. Four wides for Hardison. We'll see plenty of Dallas Hardison next year in his junior season. He'll take over as the starting quarterback from Kevin Rogers. And he's been the starting, he's been the quarterback since the second drive of this third quarter. Snap back to Dallas, looking to the far side. Pulls it back down. He's going to be dragged down for a sack at the 40. He tried to stay in the pocket and buy some time with a pump fake, but not much time there. Second sack on the Reddies today. They're looking at fourth down and long. Well, they had him from right, right around the neck and took him down. And, uh, you know, he's not a very big guy. When you look at Hardison, he's really a smaller guy at 5'10", 195. And uh, you, you, can't, you compare him to Kevin Rogers, he's, he's kind of tiny. Be just the third punt for Christian Latouf. Two kicks for 43-yard average. Here goes the low end-over-end kick. Returned from the 21 up to the 30. 
and spun down to the 33-yard line, return of about six yards for Micah Key. Let's head down to the sideline. Hunter Lively standing by with a ready sideline report. Hunter. Well, you've got to hate the way that last drive ended, but for the most part, this offensive line has done a great job giving Kevin Rogers and Dallas Hardison some time to throw today. After last week giving up, I think it was three or four sacks to ECU, these guys came to play today. Well, you can tell by just the yardage alone, 422 yards for the Reddies today. They gained a total of 321 yards last week at ECU. Pardon me, uh, last week, I'm looking at the defensive numbers, 465 yards last week, so they're nearly there with uh, more than a quarter to go. Ty Hooper still in for Northwestern. Single back behind him, Zachary Doyle. First down from their 33. We're inside three minutes to play in the third quarter. Rennies lead 43-7. to Plenty of time to Hooper to throw. Runs out of the pocket to his right. Throws it on the far side, tipped in the air, and it is caught at the 46-yard line by a Ranger receiver. Boy, a lucky break there. It was tipped in the air by the initial receiver and a first down of about 20 yards for the Rangers. That was Zachary Doyle who caught that pass and uh, was able to come down with the first down. Well, there was a lot of time for Hooper to find an open man, and the initial man he found wasn't even the man who caught the ball. Up to the 46, gain of 13 to Deshaun Gordon. Now the snap back. Hooper to throw again. Deep pass, far side, looking for Gordon. Single coverage on King. Great coverage by Chris King. Knocked it out of midair with a right hand. Pass was a little bit underthrown. Gordon was already past the football, so he didn't have much of a chance to make the catch. But they are looking for Deshaun Gordon again. Hey, stick around after the game for the Benvenuti's postgame show as uh, we will give you highlight stats and much more going on uh, during the Benvenuti's postgame show. And don't forget, uh, when the Reddings are on the road, Phil, uh, you can go down to Slim and Shorty's and watch every Reddy road game at Slim and Shorty's in downtown Arkadelphia. We'll be on the road next week in Weatherford, Oklahoma. Reddy's take on Southwestern at 3. Reddy's bring a blitz on 2nd and 10. Hooper flushed out to the near side. Throws it right to Scott Maxfield near the bench. And Coach Max made the catch. One-handed catch yeah. by the former offensive lineman at La Tech. Yeah, nice job, Coach. It's a great catch. He, he picked up about 6 yards on the play. I don't know if I'd say it was textbook, right? Coach no. knows to catch with two hands. Yeah. Gonna have, we're going to make him run a couple laps for that uh, one-handed catch. It'll be third down and ten for the Rangers, who are two of nine on third downs today. 2.04 to go, third quarter. Uh, the, the Rangers have outscored the Reddies seven to nothing in this quarter, including a 66-yard pass play to Deshaun Gordon. Gordon lined up wide to the left against Chris King. Snap back to Hooper. Reddies bring a blitz. Pass far side caught. In the air, leaping for the football for a short gain near midfield is Tamara Courtney. Courtney's been targeted quite a bit. His fourth catch today, most of them in the second half. They don't have the first down. They're at least eight yards short. And it looks like they're going for it on fourth and seven. Yeah, I would imagine every drive, the rest of the ball game for the Rangers, they're, they're probably going to be four downs for each drive. Ty Hooper, 121 yards, 10 of 24 completing passes. Dropping back to throw. A man gets an extra head of steam on him. He rolls away from pressure, throws it away. Into the northwestern bench. That uh, was a good pressure brought by from the far side by Donovan McLeod. He's from Chelsea, Oklahoma. And he forced Hooper to get rid of the football very early. You're right. And that, that pressure's been there all day, Phil, for Henderson State. They've been coming off the edges, and they, there's just been no one there to pick them up and, and block them. And so they're putting an enormous amount of pressure on Hooper, and uh, that they forced a three and out. Dallas Hardison checks back in. First down from the Ranger 48. Henderson leading 43 to 7 with a minute 30 until the start of the fourth quarter. Hardison 3 of 5 for 14 yards. Dropping back. Looking a short pass to Ponder out of the backfield. Past the 50. Dropped down to the 45-yard line. Nice tackle made by a secondary member. That was number 25, Jordan Norris on the tackle. A gain of 3 yards to the 45. Second down and 7 for the Reddies. Four wides, trips to the far side of the field. A.J. Smith all alone to the near side. Hardison will throw again. Hardison looking for Smith deep, and he overthrows A.J. Smith. It was about a yard over his reach. 
Smith was open with that big body. And uh, for initially, when it, when Hardison got rid of the football, it looked like it was well overthrown. Yeah. Turned out it was it was just a yard or so past Smith. Checking in the game now is going to be James Jackson. Is uh, Smith going to come out? Jackson lines up on the right side, right next to Corey Chappelle. He runs a crossing pattern. Hardison throws underneath. It's incomplete. He was throwing it to Carlos Arredondo at the 35. He overthrows it. Brings up fourth down and seven. And Christian Latouf comes on for another third quarter punt. And there's only 52 seconds left here in the third quarter. Reddy's lead 43 to seven. Have only scored. I well, hadn't scored at all here in, in the third quarter, and it's, they put up 43 points in the first half. Kevin Rogers stayed in the game for a series and then got out, and it's been all second-team guys since then. But two for this fourth punt today. A wobbly kick up to the 15, takes a bounce, and rolls inside the 10, inside the 5, keeps going to the 1, and it's down right there at the 1-yard line. 44-yard punt by Christian Latouf. And it's going to be a tough job here for the Rangers to get out from their own end zone. That's the second time today they've got it at the one-yard line. So when you look back at that last drive and watching the two drives by Dallas Hardison, R.J. Dallas throws a beautiful spiral, really a very pretty ball. He's putting a lot into it, though. It looks like he's he might be a little bit juiced up to get on the field and get in some action. He's been overthrowing his, his receivers. Yeah, no, you're right. And, you know, sometimes when you get a guy coming off the sidelines like that that hadn't got to – Really get a lot of playing time. That, uh, oftentimes they'll get in there and want to make some big plays and show that they can they can be just as good as the starting quarterback. And, and I think he's just rushing a lot of his passes. If you're the ready defense, you already have a safety today. Backing up the Rangers to their own one. And Hooper, deep in his own end zone, throws deep on the far wing. Single coverage, and the pass is incomplete. Flag is thrown. You could see Chris King had a handful of jersey on single coverage. And there was no reason for that. There's absolutely no reason to uh, to hold on to the jersey because the ball was way overthrown. No, that's not Chris King. Uh, that is King number 26 Pass on the near side. On the defense, number 16. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. They called number 16 on the penalty. That's Ryan Black. Black wasn't really near the play. That was... Uh, most definitely Jonathan Edward, who's going to head to the sideline now. Step out for a play. Ouch. Yeah, that whistle on the mic doesn't sound too good. Not at all. 33 seconds remain in the third quarter. Rennies lead 43-7. to Ty Hooper again back to throw. Pressured. Running to his right. He throws it away. Right into the bench. Pressure provided by defensive end Jimmy, John, Jimmy Jean. Not to put a French pronunciation on his name you were about to say Jean, weren't you yeah well, well i called uh i went like cajun redneck joby saint floor <laughs> i said floor earlier so I, I think that's like cajun redneck or something well here here in arkansas you could just you could just say by how exactly how it's spelled and that works gene works gene a little better works, than yeah. john it was up in canada though or down in thibodeau again we might pronounce it john Hooper back to throw in second and ten. Plenty of time. Dumps it off. Caught at the ten-yard line by Jerry and Tudman. Tudman up to the 20, and he's knocked down there. It'll be third and about six for the Rangers. Ten seconds. The last uh, few seconds of the third quarter will tick off. And uh, if you're the Northwestern Oklahoma Rangers, you just did something that we haven't seen very often, which is hold the Reddies to a scoreless quarter. Just the fourth quarter out of the last 66 where the Reddies do not score. Yeah. So that can the Rangers can put that in their pocket. As we head to the fourth quarter with your four fingers up, Henderson State leading 43-7 to over Northwestern Oklahoma from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. This is Henderson State Football on the Ready Radio Network. I'm Phyllis Dills, Public Affairs Specialist for the Social Security Administration, and here to tell you about My Social Security. My Social Security is a new service that lets you set up an online account and get access to the Social Security information you need the most. Use your account to get a copy of your Social Security statement, including your earnings record and estimates of future benefits. If you already get Social Security, there's even more you can do. So visit us at www.socialsecurity.gov slash myaccount. 
Let's face it, in life, there is no free lunch. Are you prepared? Do you have a plan? Who can you trust? You can trust the NFCC, the nation's largest nonprofit network of credit counseling and financial education organizations. Our certified professionals will help you learn basic financial skills and give you the tools to meet financial challenges with confidence. Come learn with us at NFCC.org. It's your money. Get smart about it. A public service from the NFCC. Hey, Ready fans. This is Gary Vaughn. Thanks for listening to the Ready's on the Ready Sports Network. 15 minutes remaining at Carpenter Haygood Stadium on Hall of Honor Day at Henderson State. The Reddies lead 43-7 over Northwestern Oklahoma. The Rangers, though, just outscored the Reddies 7-0 in that third quarter. And it's third and six for the Rangers back of their 21. Ty Hooper with a punt fake. A pump fake. Now he throws deep on the far side. Intercepted at the 50-yard line by Ryan Black. Black steps out of a tackle at the 45. He's running to the near side of the field at the 40. At the 35-30. And he's out of bounds near the 27-yard line. There is a huge block behind the play. And that has brought some of the Rangers near the ready sideline. I don't know who laid that block that was, on. That was Donovan McLeod. Oh, my goodness. He decapitated that poor kid. He came out of nowhere and decleated him. I'm surprised that kid knows where he's at right now. Well, whoever it was was dragged up to his feet by his teammates and run to the sideline. Ryan Black with the interception. How about the converted uh, safety from quarterback? Remember, Ryan Black used to be a quarterback just last year. And now Dallas Hardison back in a quarterback for the Reddies from the Ranger 26. A handoff to Varick Ponder over right guard inside the 25 to the 22. Varick Ponder with a gain of three yards on first down. Ponder's been the most often used back during the second half by Henderson, his fifth carry. That gets Ponder over 30 yards. Ponder remains in to the left side of Hardison, takes the snap, a dump off to Ponder at the 25. Double team tackle near the 21. Two yard gain for Ponder, and the Reddies have third down and five. I think you, if they don't score a touchdown right here, you got to give Houston Ray another kick. Boy, he, his head's not in the right spot after missing, uh, he's missed what, two field goals today? 32 yards and 25 yards. Back to throw is Hardison. Hit as he throws. He throws it inside the five. Caught inside the five for the touchdown. Henderson State with Javante Mack. A leaping catch at the two. And he spun inside for the touchdown. Well, just, that's the second time I've been called wrong today. You just, you just go with it and, and uh, they score the touchdown. And, and a surprising yeah. play considering that there was a free rusher that hit Hardison pretty hard when he got rid of the football. Dallas didn't get everything he wanted into that throw, and it's still a Henderson touchdown. Javante Mack with his first touchdown at Henderson State. The transfer from Sam Houston makes it 49-7. to Houston Ray lines up the point after. Kick is up. Ray makes it a clean 50 points for the Reddies here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. 13-44 to play fourth quarter. The Reddies 50 and the Rangers of Northwestern Oklahoma 7. This is Henderson State Football on the Reddy's Radio Network. Hi folks, Glenn Hill here with Century 21 and it's a great day for some football and we've got a great football team to watch. We're lucky to have such a wonderful county with such awesome teams. Makes for a great place to live. Just ask anybody. We support our teams and our Century 21 team wants to support you. The Century 21 was ranked number one in the top four categories of customer satisfaction by J.D. Powers. Hey, that's pretty nice. We want to be on your team. Call Century 21. Find your freedom with your new home with Jason Eddington of United Country Hometown Realtors. Nobody has more information available for your search to find that perfect home. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com. Take a virtual tour through all of the gorgeous properties. Check out the exclusive aerial views of the properties. Go to ArkansasCountryHomes.com and pick out your perfect home. Then call Jason Eddington at 870-210-1445. Let Jason work with you to guide you through the maze of finding that home with the most modern and unique ways possible. Call Jason Eddington at 870-210-1445. Life is good in Arkansas. Philadelphia. Ready fans, this is Joseph Snap. Thanks for listening to Henderson State Football on the Ready Sports Network. Boy, it is get to know your roster day here at Henderson State University. RJ Hawk, the Reddies have had 12 different players 
make at least one reception. They've had seven players run the football at least once. Yeah. Two players have passed the ball, and Henderson State leading 50-7 to over the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers after a 21-yard pass play to Javante Mack for the touchdown. I wonder if the Reddits have ever used every person on their roster in a ball game at home. Because, you know, you can't take as many on the road. Well, I mean, one through 99. Yeah. I'm going to say two-thirds of them have been on the field today. Yeah, pretty much. Christian Latouf continues to handle the kickoff duties. And this kick, a end-over-end kick up to the 10. Fumbled again by the return man. Picked back up. Not much there for Malcolm Robinson. Down at the 16-yard line. Boy, that fumble cost him at least a couple of seconds. Yeah, that, uh, he, instead of catching it, you know, out in front of you, he's trying to catch it to the side, and it's not doing him any good. And that's where Northwestern Oklahoma is going to take over. First and 10 from the, what is that, the 6th, 17th. Hunter Lively standing by on the sideline with a ready sideline report. Hunter, what did you see on that touchdown from Hardison to Mack? Well, guys, I'm really excited about Javante Mack. He ran a great route. Uh, he's just displaying his true athleticism. He's a very shifty guy, and I'm glad we got him away from Sam Houston State and up here in Henderson country. Boy, another quick receiver with good leaping ability. Yeah. Just what the Reddies needed. Ty Hooper on first down from his 17. Will hand it off. And a little running room past the 25-yard line up to the 30-yard line for a first down is Justin Lord. You know, and he's another one of those guys that wasn't even on the two deep whenever uh, whenever they uh, release that. Lord's second carry today. It gives him a team-high 21 yards on the ground for the Rangers. A four-receiver set. Lord still in the game behind Ty Hooper on first and 10 from the Ranger 30. Tight end put in motion. Now a throw by Hooper. Caught at the 31-yard line to the 35. Trying to get out of a tackle but dropped at the 36-yard line. Is Alex De La Cruz makes his second catch today. Gain of eight. Second down and two. They need the 40. Balls at the 38. Clock rolling inside 12.45. As the Reddies are close to that fifth consecutive victory this year, be their 31st consecutive regular season win. They need a win to keep pace with Washita. The Tigers blew out Southwestern earlier today. Now a pass into the backfield is incomplete by Hooper. He had an open man on the far side. That was Dela Cruz. He was open behind the line of scrimmage. Might have had a little room to get those two yards he needed, but this brings up third down and two. Phil, you know, Ty Hooper, let's not forget... He's a freshman, not a redshirt freshman. He's a freshman playing in this ball game, and you know, I, I think the the longer he's with this offense, he'll get better. And, and I mean, he's shown a lot of good skills so far in this game, even though it's been a blowout. I mean, he's got a he's got a great arm. Uh, kid's got a really good arm for only being five ten, a buck eighty. Rangers two of eleven converting third downs. Third down and two. The snap. It's a throw. Far side, catches made, first down, past the 40, near the 45-yard line, knocked out of bounds is Dela Cruz. Dela Cruz becoming a, a very fond target of Ty Hooper on the last couple of drives. Rangers convert for their 10th first down today. That's exactly half the first down totals for the Reddies. We have 20. Rangers keep Lord on the field. Reddies are going to bring about eight down linemen here. Hooper calls out the new play, first and ten. Reddies bring the house. He throws a quick, deep pass, far side. Man is open. Catch wow. made inside the 25-yard line, and making it to the 20 is Tamara Courtney. Courtney with a fabulous fingertip catch for the big first down for the Rangers. Well, that was like a Hail Mary pass. He just threw it up there and let Courtney run up underneath it. And Courtney's a big, strong, fast wide receiver, and he was able to do all the above. Well, the Reddies brought just about everybody mm -hmm. that left Edward in single coverage. 35 yards to Courtney, and it's first down and 10 from the Reddy 21. The Rangers looking to get into double figure points. 50 to 7, Henderson leading. We're coming up on the 11 30 mark in the fourth quarter. Single back is Lord. Hand off to Lord, running to his right. Big hit made. After the initial burst. That was McLeod again. It's Donovan McLeod who is uh, laying the hammer today. 
Gain of about five yards to the 18. Call it a four-yard gain, second down and six. You know, Phil, I do like to uh, games like this where you can see the second string guys, third string guys come in. You kind of get to see what you're what we're going to be dealing with next year. All right, the Reddies will be losing quite a lot of offensive talent. Lord, another carry. Flags thrown, and they will not count this play. It's going to be a false start on uh, on Northwestern. Okay, there was uh, an offensive lineman a little too quick. False start, number 86 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. It's on a wide receiver, Tyler Dixon, called for the false start. Sixth penalty called on at Northwestern. Henderson's been whistled seven times. 67 yards of penalties for the Reddies. And about 58 yards of penalties on the Rangers. Second and 11 from the Reddy, 22. Snap back to Hooper. He throws for the end zone, single coverage right side. Incompleted pass. It was a jump ball try for Tamra Courtney, but Jonathan Edward wins that battle. Yeah, that's another jump ball. And, I mean, Phil, he just throws it straight up. I mean, it is really, a, he's got a lot of touch on the pass, but it, it's got a lot of air underneath it when he's going to the, towards the end zone. Got a good look by Ty Hooper. Yeah. And a guy with Courtney's athleticism, that jump ball is probably, usually probably better than 50% success rate. And the Reddies line up Justin Walter to guard Courtney this time. Snap back to Hooper, looking to the far side for the end zone on the far wing. Jump ball again, incomplete. Right at the goal line, Chris King wins that battle. He went one-on-one -on -one against Jason Janty. Fourth down and 11 from the 22. And the kicking team comes on for the Rangers. That's not a very high percentage, you know, attempt for a touchdown. Going with the fade route when you're when you're this far out. I mean, usually you try that fade route 15 yards in, and, and if they're 25 yards out trying to throw the back shoulder fade. It just it's not a high percentage throw. This is the first field goal attempt of the season for Will Hawkins. We've seen handle the punting and the kicking today. 39-yard field goal attempt. Hold is good. Kick is up. It is wide left. No good. Hawkins misfires in his first field goal attempt of the season. Yeah, and uh, we're going to take a break because that's immediate timeout. 10.20 to play, fourth quarter from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, Arkansas. With the score, the Henderson State Reddies 50, the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers 7. This is Henderson State Football on the Reddy Radio Network. For Henderson State Ready Apparel Souvenirs, stop by the Ready Bookstore located on the HSU campus and the Garrison Center. For your convenience, the Ready Bookstore is open before every Ready football game. And students, save money on textbooks at the Ready Bookstore, where you can purchase, rent, and sell back textbooks every day. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Friday. We also have HSU apparel for kids, gift items, and alumni items. Find us on Facebook at Ready Bookstore or online at www. HSUbooks.com. SEM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for nearly 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus in the design of the new dining hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Halls. This semester, SCM Architects have been privileged to work on the restoration of Proctor Hall and the recently completed interior renovation of Garrison Center's Grand Ballroom. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial, interior design, historic preservation, and master planning projects at scmarchitects.com and on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. SEM Architects is a proud sponsor of Ready Athletics. This is Kendrick Burns. Welcome back to Henderson State Football on the Ready Sports Network. Back here on the Ready Radio Network, Phil Elson, R.J. Hawk, Hunter Lively on the sideline. The Reddy's 50, the Rangers 7. And we see Dallas Hardison back in the game with a play fake, a throw over the middle, and a leaping catch wow. made of the 50-yard line for a first down by Adrian Tucker. Tucker with a great fingertip catch. I don't, I don't know if he actually left in the air. It looked like he did. At, at the very least, he was on his tiptoes. Boy, that first was down at midfield. Great catch. That was a heck of a catch. He was able to do it with just his fingertip, you know, because it was so high. And boy, he's going to be a great receiver for Henderson. 
Gain of 29 yards to Hardison, from Hardison. And now a handoff to Varick Ponder. Steps out of a tackle. Spins past another one. Inside the 45. Drop down near the 40. Boy, there was some great dance moves shown by Varick Ponder. Right, at, right when he had the football, there was a man in his face. Tiptoes past one. Spins past another. A gain of seven yards. And it's second down and three. He did a Texas two-step in the backfield. Cut a rug and then was able to... Get positive yards out of that deal. Ponder again on second down and three. Right into the line. He's up to the 40. Inching his way near the first down. He's close. Needs the 39. And it looks like the linesman will call him just short. Gain of a couple of yards. And that'll bring up third and... No, they're going to move the chains. It is a Henderson first down. So he got the three yards. Impressive run there by Ponder. Just kept the legs churning. Eric Ponder, 41 yards on seven carries. Lines up to the side of Hardison, gets another carry. First down and more for Ponder. He's dragged down inside the 30-yard line of the 25. So you're telling me that we've got four good running backs? I mean, because essentially, Northwest Oklahoma's got their number one still in the game. And, and, and Ponder's running with ease just like... You know, Quan runs just like Bryson runs and, and McDonald. I mean, that's a great problem to have when you have four running backs. 13-yard gain for Ponder, who's averaging 6.8 a carry. Gets another try. Ponder over right guard. Nothing there. He's upended at the 25 by the linebacker, Devin Payton. A uh, yard on the carry. Second down and nine for the Rennies with 8.37 to play and a rolling clock. They're up by 43 points against the Rangers of Northwestern Oklahoma State. Reddies took a 43-0 lead into the halftime break. Hardison, short pass, dropped. A lot of room to run if he made the catch, but Javi Mark drops it, and that'll bring up third down and nine. That's too, that's too bad because Javi just had a chance to show everybody some speed. He had at least five yards before the defender was there. Yeah. Second and nine from the 25. Ryan McDonald in. He's flushed out, and a pass by Hardison to the backfield is caught. That's Adrian Tucker. They try to trip him up. He keeps it going inside the 20, close to the first down. He'll be about a yard short. We just saw how Adrian Tucker can stay on his feet, even though he had men on his shoulder. He had another man dragging him down by his jersey. He stayed up long enough for Gain of a few yards. It'll be fourth down and two. And the Reddies will give Houston Ray a, an attempt at a field goal. And this one will be from 34 yards out from the left hash. Out of the hold of Mark Chaus. Ball is down. Kick is up. And the kick by Houston Ray is good. And Ray adds to the lead. With 7.59 to play in the fourth quarter from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia, the Henderson State Reddies lead the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers 53-7 to as we step aside for a break. This is Henderson State Football on the Ready Radio Network. For Henderson State Ready Apparel Souvenirs, stop by the Ready Bookstore located on the HSU campus and the Garrison Center. For your convenience, the Ready Bookstore is open before every Ready football game. And students, save money on textbooks at the Ready Bookstore, where you can purchase, rent, and sell back textbooks every day. The Ready Bookstore is open 8 to 5 Monday through Thursday and 8 to 4 on Friday. We also have HSU apparel for kids, gift items, and alumni items. Find us on Facebook at Ready Bookstore or online at www. HSUbooks.com. SEM Architects have been serving Henderson State University for nearly 20 years. You'll recognize the firm's work on campus and the design of the new dining hall, the Charles Dunn Student Recreation Center, Sturgis Honors Hall, and East and West Residence Halls. This semester, SEM Architects have been privileged to work on the restoration of Proctor Hall and the recently completed interior renovation of Garrison Center's Grand Ballroom. Learn more about the firm's higher education, commercial, interior design, historic preservation, and master planning projects at scmarchitects.com. And on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, SEM Architects is a proud sponsor of Ready Athletics. This is Mark Chouse. You're listening to Henderson Football on the Ready Sports Network. For a little razzle-dazzle on the return play here for Northwestern Oklahoma. Reversing field at the 20-yard line and making it over the 30 to the 35 to the 33. Uh, pardon me, to the 35-yard line goes Northwestern's return game. 
had the Reddies red wave following the ball carrier all the way to Sean Gordon with a 20-yard return and Northwestern with a football first down to their 35. Henderson State 53, Northwestern Oklahoma State 7. Reddies have had Dallas Hardison in the game most of the second half. Kevin Rogers left after an interception, but four yards short of a 300-yard gain. Meanwhile, Ty Hooper has been in there all day for Northwest and sure is a sh throws a short completed pass to the 35-yard line. Gain of just a couple of yards to Alex De La Cruz before a swarm of ready tacklers bring him down. Call it a gain of three. The second down and seven for the Rangers. Phil, we want to thank a lot of our sponsors that helped put Ready, Athlete, ready Football on. Arkadelphia Super Smiles, Baptist Health, Brookshire, Century 21, Domino's, Java Primo, Print Mania, The Ready Bookstore, SCM Architects, Sears of Arkadelphia, Southern Bank Corp, uh, Subway, Texarkana Surgical Center, United Country Home Realtors, uh, Visit Hot Springs, and Wendy's. Ty Hooper has a blitz coming on him. Flushed out, rolling to his left, pointing deep. He throws it towards the 40-yard line, and it's just out of the reach of Dela Cruz, running in front of Ryan Black of the 35 on the Henderson side of the field. Incomplete, brings up third down and seven. Boy, McLeod was running right at him and uh, laid another big hit, this time on Hooper. Hooper's been pressured all day long, especially on second and long and third and long. About to face that here on third down and seven. Shadows stretching onto the field here at Carpenter Haygood, about half the field. Shadowed by the trees here in this valley. And the Reddies again bringing a blitz on Ho Hooper, who throws a short one incomplete. He had a man open near the 35-yard line. That was Morris out of the backfield, but it was out of his reach. Fourth down and another punt for Will Hawkins. Now's the time the Reddies can really try to run some clock off. And... It, you know, the, the running game has been pretty much good on every every level, whether it be first string, second team, or third string. And um, they've done a great job today. Now you just got to run some of that clock off. Got two new returnmen back there. I think Mark Chouse is back there. Javante Mack and Mark Chouse at the 30 to receive the punt. A high end-over-end -end punt. This will be Chouse from the 22. Makes the catch. Dances up the hash mark past the 30 and dropped at the 32. Return of about eight yards for Mark Chouse. Let's bring on, bring on Hunter Lively. Hunter, the Reddies had a pretty intense first half of football, but the second half it's been more of, well, let's look at the backups a little bit. And uh, Northwestern has not, they've been able to do a little bit offensively, but the Reddy defense is now a little more stout. Yeah, I'm really excited about this linebacking unit, the first and second team guys. I mean, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but there's not really much of a drop-off between the first team and the second team guys at linebacker. When you've got Donovan McLeod and Tim Llewellyn out there running with the second team guys, that's great. Yeah, they, they've done a heck of a job today, that's for sure. And uh, they're preserving that uh, number of points scored in a game. Hardison, a short pass for Ponder, who makes the catch out of the backfield of the 34, up the left sideline, past the 40. He's got the first down to the 43, gain of 11 yards to Ponder. Boy, he runs hard. He really does. Yeah. Eric Ponder, just like the rest of the ready uh, core of running backs, is uh, not a soft runner. There is an injured Ranger. will be a little slow to get off the field. That's one of the cornerbacks, James Dye. Well, he's over here on the near side. I was looking for him. Couldn't find him. He's on the near side. He's limping off. And actually, no, there's another down ranger right in front of the ready bench. We were blocked from viewing him. And uh, that injured ranger on his front side on the turf here at Carpenter Higgett is Brandon Cannon, a linebacker from Auburn, Alabama. And he remains on his front side as the athletic training staff of the Rangers tends to him. Uh, right in the shadows. We'll step aside for an injury timeout. 6.24 to play from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia with the score. The Henderson State Reddies 53, the Northwestern Oklahoma State Rangers 7. This is Henderson State football on the Ready Radio Network. 
Stop in and check out the great savings at your neighborhood Sears hometown store located at 2919 Pine Street in Arkadelphia. You can count on us for all your appliance, tool, electronic, and lawn and garden needs. Sears hometown stores offer delivery, setup, and installation. We also have financing offers through Sears Card and a layaway program. Application is in-store and approval is immediate. Shop local at your Sears hometown store located at 2919 Pine Street in Arkadelphia. Sears of Arkadelphia, proud sponsor of Henderson State University. Go Reddies! And remember, don't buy your mower where you buy your deodorant. Make today the last day you watch live from the sidelines because of your weight. Long-term weight loss can be yours with Lap Band from Texarkana Surgery Center, a phenomenal procedure that helps you lose weight for good and is 10 times safer than gastric bypass. Dr. Hecker and Dr. Kalen have performed over 1,000 Lap Band procedures, and they provide you with all the tools you need to achieve your goals. Make your reservation now to attend a free informational seminar. Seating is limited, so call today, 903-277-5751, because today is your last day to watch live from the sidelines. Hi, this is Athletic Director Sean Jones, and you're listening to Henderson State Football on the Ready Sports Network. Well, we got back to action a little quicker than anticipated. Merrick Ponder ran over left end for 26 yards to the Northwestern 30. An impressive run by Ponder, who was shoved out of bounds before breaking free. And the Reddies come up on a five-yard gain on first down, brings up second and five from the Ranger 25-yard line. That was uh, Kentra Williams on a reception. Now a pass again to Williams, running to his left, and he's over the 20-yard line, and he is down to the 17. Is that Williams or is that 89? That is 89, I believe. His, his jersey's messed up in the back. I believe, it's believe Cody that's... Clayton. Yeah. He doesn't look like he doesn't look like uh, like Del Rio. He certainly doesn't have that size. Dallas Hardison throws a completed pass out of the backfield. There's Javante Mack inside the 10, past the 5, and he takes it in for the ready touchdown. Second time Javante Mack scores on a pass from Dallas Hardison today. Second touchdown of the season for Javante Mack. 59-7 to the score, 5.26 to play. Yeah, nice. It was just a... Uh, pass out in the flats, and he, you, you, what you do is you you throw it out there and you let Mac just do something, you know, let him make a play in space, and that's exactly what he did. It's two nice plays by Javante Mack for these scores. He is shifty, and he is very athletic. Now Christian Latouf is doing the kicking for the rain, for the Reddies, and Latouf with the right-footed kick puts it through. Isn't that a little bit different? Yeah. Uh, pardon me, that's not Latouf. That is Houston Ray. I was looking at the wrong number. That is Houston Ray with a point after. 5.26 to play from Carpenter Haygood Stadium in Arkadelphia. The Rennies 59, the Rangers 7. This is Henderson State Football on the Ready Radio Network. Suits, we've all got them, but we really hate wearing them. So why would you want to bank with people that have to wear suits every day? At Southern Bank Corp, we take a casual approach to banking. No suits required here. We realize not every customer is going to fit the corporate mold. That's why we can customize loans and accounts based on your wants and needs, not try to fit you into a box or into a suit. We aren't your typical stuffy bankers, just friendly, laid-back people here to help you. We cater to all kinds of suits around here, but you can leave your birthday suit at home. Southern Bank Corp, building communities, changing lives. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. Is your bank changing names again? Do you see account charges and lots of fees in your future? Well, if that's the case, then it's time to pick the bank that you really want, the bank that you deserve. That's Southern Bank Corp. At Southern, we believe in providing products that are superior to the competition on the front end. Our loan rates are the best in the business and we'll treat you just like family. That's why we know you'll be a happy customer here for years to come. So don't sit back and let someone else pick the bank that's right for you. Pick the bank that has the name that you really want on your debit card. Pick Southern Bank Corp. Come see us today. Southern Bank Corp with locations in Hot Springs, Bismarck, Malvern, and where it all began, Arkansas. Philadelphia. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. This is Blake Lopez and you're listening to Ready Football on the Henderson State Radio Network. James Dye with a kick return for Northwestern up past the 30-35 near the 40-yard line. He's tackled at the 40 return of 20 yards for Northwestern and with 5.15 to play in the fourth quarter, the Henderson State Reddies lead 60-7 over Northwestern Oklahoma State. Just completed a scoring drive with Another touchdown reception by Javante Mack, his second today. Ty Hooper throws in the backfield an incomplete pass to Dela Cruz. That's the second time they've thrown incomplete to Dela Cruz on a wide pattern in the backfield, one of those flat passing routes. Second down and 10 from the 40 for the Rangers. 
So the Henderson State ROTC is in the house, and they've brought a bench press board, and basically they are taking fans out of the stands and asking if you can do 60 push-ups on their board for the 60 points the Reddies have put up, and this poor guy, I don't think he quite made it. Well, push-up per point is going to get those biceps and chest muscles a little bit heavier today. Handoff up the middle, nothing there. Quick tackle made by the Reddies. Brandon Quintero, the defensive tackle, makes the stop. It'll be third down and ten for the Rangers from the 40. Great play there by Quintero. Brandon out of Sepulpa, Oklahoma. A 250-pound redshirt freshman. Gobbled up Malcolm Robinson right after the transfer. Third and ten for the Rangers. Clock moving to 440. Hooper takes the snap. He'll throw to the flats again. Leaping catch by Dela Cruz. Past the 45. Dives for the 50, but it'll come up short. A flag is thrown right at the end of the play. Dela Cruz is short by a yard for the first down. Linesman makes the the uh, the penalty call, and I wonder what, what this call is. Personal foul. Late hit. Number 43 on the defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. It's going to be against Allen Tatum, the sophomore out of Warren, Arkansas. And now you, you can't have dumb penalties. We talk about that all the time, and and we saw that last week against East Central where you get in the fourth quarter and you've got the game in hand and, and you just start making some dumb penalties. Reddies have now been called for eight penalties, nearly 80 yards, a little over 80 yards of penalties today. A handoff, there's Robinson making men miss, pass left tackle over the 30, 25-20, inside the 15, 10, all the way for the touchdown. Malcolm Robinson, the Little Rock Central product, with a 36-yard touchdown scamper for the Rangers. And Northwestern Oklahoma State in double figures with 13 points. Yeah, and uh, we didn't think we'd see that today, that's for sure. Simple play, run over left tackle, and the angle that Robinson took ran any ready tacklers right into blockers. The point after by Will Hawkins is good. 4.07 to play. It is 60 to 14. Henderson leading over the Rangers of Northwestern Oklahoma State. If you look at the points in the second half, though, it's 14 to 7 in favor of uh, of uh, the Rangers. Yeah. As we go down to Hunter Lively with a sideline report. And Hunter, this second half for the Reddies has actually been a little better for the Rangers. Yeah, uh, you know, I, it's going to be interesting to hear from Coach Maxfield on, on his take on the second half. But I think overall it's been more of a complete game this week than, than last week. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt about yeah, that. The Reddies, where you keep the starters out there, uh, perhaps... Perhaps this game is even uglier than the score is right now, but it's interesting. We talked about this quite a bit in the pregame show, and Scott Maxfield alluded to it with his, his pregame interview with R.J. Hawk that the bar is set very high for a Henderson team when you, you win a game by 17 points and you're still a little disappointed with it. Yeah. They were not happy with last year's 42 to nothing win at Northwestern Oklahoma. I think they'll be a little happier with how things have gone today. Yeah, today's been a uh, been a good day. You're up 60 to 14, and... Uh, you know, the Reddies just, uh, I know Frank Keenan doesn't like to hear it, but they're ready trains rolling. Bryson and Mack back to return the kick. It bounces at the 35 and goes out of bounds. Well, the kickoff by Will Hawkins turns into a penalty, which gives Henderson State tremendous field position and four minutes and seven seconds to play. Henderson State with... 60 points for the second time in the last three games. It's the third time this year that they've broken the 60-point barrier. They're open the season with 72 points at Southern Nazarene. I think you'd like to see at least one more successful scoring drive just to put the cherry on the top of the Sunday. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, some scores from Division One football. I know today was a big Saturday, and, and folks that may be listening want to keep up. Number three, Alabama, and number 11, Mississippi. Oh, that'd be Ole Miss. Tied 17-17 with 4.13 left to go. As good of a game as people thought. How about that? First down for the Reddies. As Dallas Hardison still in the game. A quick out pass to the right side, and it'll be a loss of yardage here for Henderson State as Devontae Mack is dragged down right after making the catch. They'll give him the line of scrimmage, so it's not a loss. It's no gain. Let him that clock roll. Scores around the GAC. 
54-21. Washita blows out southwestern Oklahoma. So the Tigers improve to 4-0. and Southeastern defeats Bacon 53-7 in a non-conference game. Tech and Monticello are kicking off in about three minutes. Southern Arkansas and Harding underway at 6 o'clock as well. A run up the middle by the Reddies. First down past the 50. That's Varick Ponder with a gain of about 15 yards. I actually call that a 20-yard run for Varick Ponder and a Henderson first down. It's going to give Ponder 99 yards on 11 carries yeah. as he heads off the field. Great, great day by Ponder. He is, he is put in some work. And it's a gain of 18 yards by Varick. The Reddies put Rodney Bryson in behind Dallas Hardison. 2.56 to play. Clock is moving. Hardison hands it off. And a shifty move to the left side. Met at the line of scrimmage now as Bryson no gain. Looking forward to next week. The Reddies get back on the road. They take on the Southwestern Oklahoma State Bulldogs, a team that was crushed across the street earlier today. Southwestern will come in 2-3. and three. Next week's kickoff is set for 5 p.m. A mid-afternoon tilt. We're on the air at 4.30 on the Ready Radio Network. Bryson again. Second carry of the drive. Flags thrown after a gain of five yards. That was the back judge who makes the penalty call. Face mask, number 93 on the defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. Well, I have no 93 on uh, on my roster here, so I don't know exactly who that was. But whoever it was commits the face mask, and the 15-yard penalty moves the Reddies to the Ranger 27. 2.08 to play. Reddies usually not a team to sit on the football, even with a big lead in the last couple of minutes. Hardison hands to Bryson, and he's going to get nothing, maybe a half yard. Nice form tackle made by... Uh, Teotis Williams, a six foot six sophomore defensive end, who just stood Bryson up. Second down and ten. Hardison takes the snap, gives to Bryson, making a man miss at the 25, stutter stepping at the 20, back over the middle at the 15. And Bryson with. Nice little run there for the first down gain of 10 yards. Yeah, they're you know, running that football like like they have all day. And one of the Reddies so far in the day rushing, they've rushed the ball for 200 yards. Nice little cut back there near yeah. the sideline by Bryson to get that extra push for the first down. They're at the 15 with a minute 28 to play. Another handoff. There's Bryson at the 15, falls forward to the 12. Three-yard gain for Rodney. Give him 81 yards. Anderson State ran for 245 yards against Southeastern two weeks ago. So they may come up a little bit short of that season high today. 616 yards of total offense is third best for the Reddings. There's Ponder with a carry. At the 10, he's got 100 yards. He'll be pushed back after the initial burst. He'll get about three yards on the carry. And Varick Ponder, yet another ready running back with a 100-yard game. How many, what's that, four readies this year that have had four 100-yard games? And Bryson has not done it. Ryan McDonald, actually nobody's had 100 yards. That's surprising. There's been, they've shared the carries so often. Nobody's got over 100 until Varick Ponder. Hardison throws for the end zone, and the catch not made. It is an incomplete pass in the corner of the end zone. He was looking for Jalen Jones on single coverage. 23 seconds remaining. And Houston Ray coming on for yet another attempt at a field goal. Ray has had a very busy day kicking. He hasn't been kicking off at all, but as far as field goals go, he's tried five. He's converted on three of them. This one from inside the right hash mark will be a 27-yard field goal attempt. Chouse hold, the kick up, and the kick by Houston Ray is good. 
And with 18 seconds to play, the Reddies add to the lead. It's now 63-14. to 14. And Houston Ray hitting his last two field goal attempts, RJ. I know you, you're pretty sure that's a big thing for him because he won't leave today missing his last field goal try. Yeah, no, he's doing a, doing a heck of a job as uh, a happy Sean Jones makes his way into the athletic, into the press box. Well, it's been a long and, uh, day here for the Henderson State Athletic Department, has it not? It's not over yet. Yeah, no, I mean, you've had a, a busy day with the Hall of Honor and, and everything, and now just a, a great job by the Reddies. Our next home game here from Carpenter Haygood Stadium will be against the Harding Bison on October the 25th. So a couple of road games for the Reddies out Southwestern next week, then in Russellville to take on the Wonder Boys at Tech on the 18th. And the Reddies have three of their last four games here at Carpenter Haygood Stadium where they've been so good in the regular season. Christian Latouf continues to handle the uh, kickoffs. 18 seconds remaining. The two for the low line drive kick. Bounces at the 20 and received at the 10. Tiptoeing up to the left side, Justin Lord. And Lord is dropped at about the 29 yard line. There's some pushing and shoving at the end of the play. Teams part ways. 11 seconds remaining, and we'll have one more play. Uh, one or two. Uh, it depends on what they want to do, whether it's a running play or a passing play. So this will be the last play from scrimmage this afternoon. The Reddies will move to 5-0 and oh on the regular season. Second highest point total for the Reddies this season. Last play, the snap back to Howell. He shows off that arm, a deep pass far side. It is caught for a first down and then run out of bounds at the 30, so that won't be the last play. Three seconds on the clock on the deep pass to Reggie Harris. Ty Hooper with an impressive throw. 41 yards to Harris. They're at the Henderson 30, so they've got a chance to end the game with a Hail Mary into the end zone. Howell takes a look to the ready bench. Now takes the last snap of the day. To the end zone from Howell. And the ball is incomplete in the front corner of the end zone as the gun sounds. And the Henderson State Reddies take down Northwestern Oklahoma today by a final score of 50, of 63 to 14. And you can put it in the books. Boy, what a fun game. I mean, sometimes it, it seems like these games go on forever whenever you put this many points up. But uh, uh, it's still only a three-hour game, believe it or not. And um, it's fun. And now we'll look for Hunter Lively to catch up with Coach Maxfield. Before we do that, Let's take a legal ID. Let's pause 10 seconds for a station identification. You're listening to the Ready Sports Network, KYXKFM, ESPN 106.9 in Gurdon, Arkadelphia, and KRN 920, the sports animal.